What's up and welcome back to Kinda Funny's Top Gun in Review. That's right. We are ranking, reviewing, and recapping every Top Gun film. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes. You might know me better as Blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> I am joined by Matt, the Wolfman, Batson. Ow! <laughs> Mike, Jetwash Howard. Woo, let's get it. Nick. Hammer Scarpedo. Well, that's in contention now. That's in contention now. Mm -hmm. I might have mm -hmm. to pick a new one. When Ed uh, Harris has your same call sign, I think you got to give it to Ed Harris. I don't know. You give it to Ed, yeah. I think you yeah. got to give it to Ed. You give Ed it and I go way it. back. He'll be cool with it. He'll be cool. And Andy, what was yours? What did we? Solstice coming in. Oh, God. Andy Solstice Cortez. It just keeps getting better, everybody. Of course, this is Kind of Funny's in review. Each and every week, we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Uh, next week, we'll be returning to Jurassic World with Fallen Kingdom. And then the week after that will be the final Jurassic World Dominion uh, when it comes out in theaters. You can get it on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com. You can also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review and we'll be right there for you if there's a movie franchise you love or hate chances are we have reviewed it so go check that out uh if you wanted to watch the show live as it's being recorded and get the show ad free you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers molecule fargo brady and anonymous have all done today we're brought to you by me and chime and credit karma but we're gonna have to get to that later because I do not want to dilly. I do not want to dally any longer. We got to get into it. Top Gun Maverick. Released on May 27th, 2022. With a runtime of 2 hours and 11 minutes. It was directed by Joseph Kaczynski. He made his big screen directorial debut with the 2010 science fiction film Tron Legacy. The sequel to the 1982 film Tron. And Mike, some exciting stuff for you here. His previous work has primarily been with CGI-related television commercials, including the Starry Night commercial for Halo 3 Ooh. and the award-winning Mad World commercial mm -hmm. for Gears of War. Oh, no yeah. Way. I hey, love that. Yeah. Awesome. So Goat. that is badass. Um, one interesting note for this movie that ratchets it up to a 10 already is the screenplay, the final revision of the screenplay done by Christopher McQuarrie, who y'all might know as the writer director of the modern mission impossible movies and all of a sudden everything starts making a lot more mm -hmm. sense feel it makes a lot of sense uh the music in this one once again done by harold faltermeyer but with an assist a lovely lovely assist from the one and only hans zimmer baby just given that extra level of oomph mm -hmm. that it needed and lady gaga joining the crew <laughs> for this one <laughs> which you always gotta love uh, it had a budget of 170 million, which is quite a bit more than the budget of 15 million that the first movie had. But you know what? It's been a while. Things have changed quite a bit. And making movies is expensive, especially when Tom Cruise is involved, because he was like, you know what? I don't want any green screen or CGI aerial shots in the film. Even the close up cockpit shots are taken during real in flight sequences. This meant that must, much of the cast had to undergo extensive G force training sessions to withstand the physical demands of the pressures during flight. Woo! And it was worth it, everybody. And if you felt I feel it, it, it was yeah, absolutely yeah. worth it. <laughs> oh, man. So there we go. Uh, with all of that out of the way, Nick, as the, the you saw Top Gun one in theaters. I did. Mm -hmm. What you are, are your the thoughts? Top Gun? You are the Top Gun. What First are your thoughts? On top uh, Gun this, this movie is one hell of a ride. That's what I will say right there. Uh, if you are on the fence at all, if you're like, you know what? I don't like Top Gun. I'm not a fan of Tom Cruise and I don't really particularly care about aerial combat. Uh, maybe this isn't the movie for you. No, I'm kidding. You should go see this regardless because say what you will about the plot we'll get into the plot we'll get into the character dynamics we'll get into some of the side characters that may or may not have needed to be into this to feel kind of shoehorned in but by the end of this movie let's well let's just put it this way i blew i had a flat tire driving to this movie i had to change the tire on route to uh, to my donut uh, on route uh to the movie walked in covered in mud and just begged i was like i'm having a bad day Poor D was with me too. She was like, oh, Nick's gonna be I was like, I just want to die. I just want to die coke. Got a diet coke, sat down. By the end of this film, I told I had totally forgotten about that. This movie is one fucking hell of a ride. And the last, if if nothing else, if you don't even want to watch Tom Cruise act, buy a ticket, 
wait an hour and then go into the movie and just watch the last 40 minutes of it because it is the coolest aerial photography and some of the best sequences I have ever seen in my life, hands down. And I am so unbelievably happy that uh, the director and the team and Tom Cruise all got together and said, we're going to do as much of this practically as possible because there's an alternate reality where someone else got hired to do this and they did all of this in CG and it would have just been the worst movie ever made. Just terrible. <laughs> Matt Batson. Uh, this is one of the greatest action movies of all time. And and again, like to echo what Nick's saying, not all of that's creatively. Like there there are some missteps creatively, but they don't do anything like egregious there. What really like makes this movie special is all the technical aspects. It's doing everything practical. It's how they shoot it. It's the variety of shots that they have from the cockpit, all the cameras that they use inside and out of the planes. It's beautiful. Like you feel every turn, every maneuver, and all of that is the sound design too. <sighs> Unbelievable. It's it's so crisp and like oh, like it it just has you. It just has you the whole movie. And it's it's funny because for years, like we've known about this movie. And I, you know, we talked about it last week. I was a Top Gun fan, but hadn't really seen it since I was a kid. Uh, you know, it, we're we're in the age where we have all these legacy sequels, and you're like, cool, another one of these. Can't wait for that to be on uh, in review. And I wasn't that excited for it. And then, especially with all the delays, uh, you know, you had COVID. Tom Cruise really wanted this movie to be in theaters, and you totally understand why now. I was so confused by all the hype leading up to this movie. I just remember thinking, like, it can't be. Like, this is this is Top Gun. What makes Top Gun so great, the original, is all the I iconic moments that are extremely 80s. And you can't replicate that again without it being corny. And actually, they, they do replicate. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it when we get into the plot. In the beginning of this movie, it's not corny at all. It's super fucking cool. It's awesome. Um, but they what they do is they improve on all the things that the original wasn't great at you know we last week we talked about last week uh, earlier this week we talked about all the chaotic moments of when they're in the air and it can be hard to follow and it's it was a, an incredible achievement for the time of what they were doing but here like it's it's just so incredibly well executed that in like from a technical standpoint and from a stylish standpoint that it, i just love it i love it so much andy cortez yeah, this movie is absolutely it, it lived up to all the hype and I didn't think that was possible. I wouldn't I thought this movie was going to be like Jack Reacher until I saw the more recent trailer for it where I mm -hmm. said oh, like god damn, they were really kind of going all out here with the cinematography and all of the cool camera shots and I had mentioned it last week that this movie's trying to do dog fighting in an age where the technology can't really show it off in a meaningful way or in a in an entertaining way so they kind of got to do what they can with you know movement in the cockpit the, the fake cockpit that they're in you reusing the same shots trying to create that chaos and tell a story is really tough but knowing that now they were going to have that technology going into it, it this movie far surpassed any uh, expectation that i had for it um i do think in some of the slower parts, I don't think it's, uh, I do think it, it, you know, like Matt and Nick were just mentioning, it does lack a little bit storytelling wise in some moments. Maybe it's just uh, sequences of certain actors, but um, like Val Kilmer coming back, I thought was so beautifully done and emotional. And uh, that's that sequence really got me because we we know his struggles and what he's going through. And um, it, it was done so beautifully. Um but yeah, the the action sequences near the end. This movie gets anime as fuck in a lot of moments. I my only critique is uh, I leaned over to Tim and I wish that some of the jets were like color coded, so you could know they not did only that who with the, the tail wings a little the, the 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 rudders a little bit, but not enough. I'm right there with you. Yeah, like I I just to and it it's not really that I have because I'm having trouble following the action. It's more that like. It cooler. would just add. It, it would just add more cool, to the yeah. animeness of it if we yeah, saw like Maverick's sure. like stripes on his wings, you know, or something like that. Um, yeah, this movie kicks ass. This movie needs to be watched in a gigantic theater with a big ass screen and big sound. Um, it is. It had me just super tense in a lot of the action sequences near the end. This is 
like, God damn, this is Tom Cruise at his strongest. And we've seen him absolutely kick ass the last Mission Impossible movies. Um, this movie rules. Absolutely worth it. Please go watch this movie. Support it. Snowbike Mike. This movie is phenomenal. No doubt about it. These guys have hit all the key points. But truly and honestly, going into it, I didn't think that you could create a sequel and actually have it live up to the hype and the awesomeness that the first one was after decades. But they found a way. And I love all the touchstones, the callbacks that we'll get into during the plot where you just smile and you're like, oh, snap, they're doing that. That's a lot of fun. And it's a new generation, right? I think they did a really good job at diving into the new class of Top Gun and really showing off all the differences and the diversity of this team, right? I think in the first one, when we look at it, you really only get to zoom in on a couple of pilots. This one, I felt like they nailed a lot of the pilots and really made us care. And it's adrenaline pumping. There's risk involved. It had me on the edge of my seat. And there's some really powerful and impactful moments, even during the slow parts, that make you involved and engaged on that. And I really, really loved every single moment of this. The soundtrack did miss Take My Breath Away, which was a big miss for me. That was my favorite song of the first one. But Lady Gaga, as I like to say, only crushed it at the end credits. Absolutely took that away and blew that one out of the water. And uh, yeah, this is really special. I can't wait to get into the plot, but I'm blown away with how good this one was. So good that I saw it twice in a row in the movie theater. As many people know, listening and watching, I like to watch movies on my phone. No, no. I spent four hours in the movie theater last night. That's incredible. I love it. I text Mike last night. I was like, what do you think of Top Gun? And he goes, me and Earl the Squirrel just got in our (laughs) flight suits and we're going back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I love that. that That is the mark of excellence from something like Mike. No, I mean, dude, for me too. I, I saw this movie a couple days ago, uh, and I thought that there was, I thought I was going to enjoy it, but I thought there was no way I was going to be interested in watching it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually I'm the type of person that likes watching the Marvel movies multiple times, but that's because mm-hmm. I'm looking for Easter eggs. I'm looking for, you know, the, the fun extra stuff because I'm me. I needed to watch this movie again. And now that I've seen it again, I think I need to watch it a third time. Uh, this is my favorite movie of all time. I'm standing by it now. I wow. fucking love this thing because it's everything i could have wanted i think that they absolutely nailed the legacy aspects of it they upped the ante this is just a fantastic action movie front to back i think that the weakest part of it by far is the love story i don't think i think it's serviceable i don't think it's that bad it never really gets in the way too much i think that there are moments of it that i like i like the 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 jokes they have with the kid and some of the relationship stuff there I, i just don't love that they ended on it i feel like the end of this movie is so good and to have the final moments be kind of like about the weakest part of the movie is honestly the one criticism I have. Otherwise, I think they just committed full tilt to what this is. And I appreciate so much like anyone that's watched us do these reviews. Like I jokingly uh, hit up Mike and Andy after I had watched this. I'm like, yo, we had we have in, we have reviewed 312 movies on in review, which is absolutely insane to think about. And one common through line for me is I love when a movie comes back and fixes the problems of the old one and like finds all the ways to take bad things and turn them into pure hype. And this movie does uh, to Top Gun 1 what Fast 5 did to Fast 1 through 4. It does what Cobra Kai seasons 1 through 4 do to the Karate Kid franchise. Like It takes everything we love about them and just distills it into just pure perfection Mm -hmm. and just the best version possible. I honestly think that this movie is going to ruin my experience with a lot of different movies going forward. Like I can't imagine a Star Wars dogfight ever living up to anything that this movie can offer and that is insane like the trench run of the death star the final battle of return of the jedi those are some of the most hype uh action sequences of this ilk i've ever seen and this just crushes those this crushes some of my favorite movie moments of all time and it's because they set the stakes up perfectly they the whole entire movie is designed around one crazy action sequence and they make us believe in the stakes of it so hard and every single thing that they do they just keep upping the ante there's about five times through this movie where i'm like what are they going to do after this and then they have an amazing answer they always have an amazing answer and there are multiple moments of this where like i feel like the last third of this movie you just don't see coming and it is the most incredible thing ever but for this whole thing to start off the way that it does with the most beautiful going backs to um fuck okay thank you I mean, I need to move my car. This sucks. Uh, <laughs> um, 
for it to, to start off with the 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 cut the top gun we get the theme they throw in danger zone they're like yo greatest hits let's get him out of the way because yeah. tom cruise needs to be the fastest man alive <laughs> and when they do the shit they set it up as if the plot of this movie is going to be man versus machine drones are going to take over guess what tom cruise solves that in the first 10 minutes mm-hmm. he's like no we're better than machines fuck the that battle's plot. over <laughs> we're doing more this movie is absolutely incredible. I have nothing but glowing things to say, and I can't wait to keep talking to you. I am going to go move my car, though. Uh, so, yeah, keep talking. And then get I, think, I, I think we out. need a sequence here uh, that we edit in that is, uh, you know, in the style of the opening of this movie in the original Top Gun. But it's Tim just moving his car. Moving his car and so yeah. it's like the, the people, they're like, yeah, this way. Yeah, bring it over here. And then and they give Tim the, the thumbs a lot, up and then a lot he pulls of thumbs away. Ups yeah listen uh, i will drive i will drive over to tim's house right now we all have to meet there and we can do we can do that after this and then you can you matt will give you the footage and you can you can put that in there and you know i'm i know k-log i'm sure he could uh he'll give us the go ahead oh you really you think we'll get the full rights i think he'd be okay with it i I do want to say like to to back up tim's point like one of the the only thing that i'm really disappointed with the movie the thing that kind of keeps it from being what everything that I wanted it to be was that love story. I yes. felt like that was shoehorned in. Hmm. Uh, and this is no disrespect to Jennifer Connelly, uh, who did a great job. But I actually, I don't think they had great chemistry. I really wish they had just been friends. The idea that they brought her back and she's the the Peggy Benjamin from 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 the lore of the Admiral's Daughter from the two lines that they mentioned. The, 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 okay. the two times. Did yeah. you not get to catch that? No, no, I didn't. So like the whole time, and that was my big complaint too. And, and really that doesn't, forgive the, the no. performance and how it's written um because they do and this is probably like my biggest pet peeve the thing i hate the most in movies is when they treat a character like you know who they are yeah, yeah. like the whole time i'm sitting there like did i miss like a fucking tie-in comic book or something like who, <laughs> no, who is so jennifer connelly they and never so, mention i don't think they ever mention her last name or if they do it comes yeah. very quickly but there's two scenes in the very first top gun right where goose makes mention to uh to the admiral's daughter it's in like the first like mm-hmm. 15 minutes of the movie and then later meg ryan when they're sitting at the table uh, when he's playing Great Balls of Fire, talks about Penny Benjamin and how that yeah. like almost ended Maverick's career. But those were intended to be sort of filler, fun, like fleshing right. out his backstory. They never intended for that character to be anything more than just a fun anecdote about how reckless and careless Maverick was in his youth, which goes back to back up him having to actually, you know, be a leader and, and, and be a good wingman. The mm-hmm. fact that they brought him back in, I don't mind it either way. The disappointing aspect of it was I didn't feel like they had great chemistry as lovers. I thought I was like, oh, these two read to me as old acquaintances that I really wish they had explored that. I don't love when they shoehorn love stories into to movies. Um, and I don't and I think we're just beyond that at this point. I think it's actually OK for like a male lead and a female lead to just have an, yeah, a friendship relationship. Friends, yeah. But what the, the bigger disappointment was that it took valuable screen time for what I felt was should have been the heart of the story, which was Miles Teller and and Tom mm-hmm. Cruise's relationship. So the Rooster Maverick relationship was one that I was like, we're an hour into this movie. They've had like two scenes together. They haven't even they haven't had a moment to really chop it up. I had hoped that they would have resolved the issue, which the issue itself I thought was very, very poorly done as well. The hit he's like, oh, I, I stopped him from going to flight school for four years. And he was like, I'll never forgive you for this. I'm like, how about you killed his dad? Maybe that would have been slightly right. more of a, of a thing that he could have resented you for. But I just thought that I would have liked to have seen them because I thought they had good chemistry on screen together, bond a little bit more. And I wanted them like hanging out, drinking a beer, talking about Goose. I wanted him talking about all the things that he had, like Maverick had failed him you know, over the years, we don't really get that. We get that sort of at the end and it's very fulfilling there, but I'm like, where was that? Cause the Maverick goose connection in the first one, I thought was so pretty it's much the was the heart of the, of the film. It really yeah. was. Um, and that, but aside from that, I think, I think that would have led to a little bit more of the fun factor as well. But I think the scenes we get with everyone else where they're jibing each other and giving each other shit, I wanted more of that too. I wanted yeah. more of the just the pilots being assholes. I wanted more of of the dynamics between these, like the best of the best coming to. Like I love the line, granted, it's from the trailer that like, hey, when Phoenix goes, we're the best pilots in the world. Who the fuck are they going to get to train us? And then you see, you see the same shot of maverick i mean the similarities of these movies are great like they, yeah. you can tell it get that that joseph uh, kaczynski like love the first top gun because the shot of him holding the with with the watch him holding the the notepad not the notepad the clipboard walking is the walking exact the same class. shot yep. as charlie yep. walking yep. to the class uh-huh. and it's great. so fucking perfectly done anyway go see this movie it's great go see this damn movie man all right without further ado let's get to the plot 
Oh, word from our sponsors? Uh, you know what? Let's take a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies. I love Me Undies from head to toe, all over my body. If you don't believe me, of course, right now, I'm wearing the Me Undies shirt. You can tell by the little tag going on right there, right? I got the Me Undies lounge shorts going on. Of course, I got the Undies, and then boom, Me Undies socks, baby. That's how we do out here at Kind of Funny. I love being soft head to toe in the micro modal fabric. You already know all about that, but if you don't. Let's face it, summer's sweaty, but your butt doesn't have to be. With MeUndies light and breathable micromodal fabric, you can stay comfy and cool all summer long. They have super fun seasonal prints and tons of styles to choose from. But if you just like classic black, that's totally cool too. They got a bunch of just bold colors for you to go for. They have super fun seasonal prints, tons of styles and sizes extra small to 4XL. So you can bring the beach to your butt without ever leaving your living room. MeUndies has a great offer for all of you first time purchasers. You can get 15% off. If you sign up for their free to join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash kind of funny. That's MeUndies.com slash kind of funny. Tell them Tim Getty sent you. Shout out to Chime for sponsoring this episode. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early without direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is about more than just getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. Uh, so. What are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at chime.com slash KF games. That's C-H-I-M-E dot com slash KF games. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Get started at chime.com slash KF games. Shout out to Credit Karma for sponsoring this episode. Want a new credit card but not sure how to choose? You don't need to apply for the first offer that you see in the mail. Credit Karma can help you zero in on the right option for you and apply with more confidence. I love Credit Karma. I've been using it for years to check my credit profile, make sure everything is good and on the up and up. Uh, credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you offers that are tailored to your financial situation. Credit Karma partners with a wide range of card issuers so you can be sure that you're exploring all sorts of options. Best of all, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply, helping you apply with more confidence. Comparing cards on Credit Karma is 100% free and most importantly, will not affect your credit score. That is huge. Credit Karma, create your own karma. Ready to find the right card for you? Head to Credit Karma and check out your personalized mix of offers today. That's creditkarma.com or hit up the Credit Karma app to find the right card for you. You. That's creditkarma.com. Now let's get to the plot. <laughs> Are you just going to fade out? I, want, I wish we had <laughs> that. Read the slack. I told you the slack. I didn't know if you were going to just end it. You said, and I quote, I'm going to play the Top Gun theme. I was like, I'll listen to you play this theme all day, bro. Yeah. And there then I go. said, and then I'll start getting quiet, and then you pop in. I didn't read that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I wish we had far. the bell, like that, that like gong that goes off oh, every five God, minutes in so this movie. Lit. It's so fucking oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Top Gun Maverick. On March 3rd, 1969, the United States Navy established an elite school for top 1% of its pilots. Its purpose was to teach the lost art of aerial combat and to ensure but the handful of men who graduated were the best fighter pilots in the world. I don't know if they changed that one. Probably people who graduated. Uh, they succeeded. Today, the Navy calls its fighter it fighter weapon school. The flyers call it Gong Top Gun yes. Maverick. <laughs> it's so I, I was not oh, expecting no. this Neither at all. I, I thought it was like a prank. At the, I was like, are they just no. showing like part of the first movie? And then, no, I they just reshot fonts. everything. <laughs> they reshot the entire intro and I and with the, with with the same theme. And then Danger Zone kicks in as the plane's coming up. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at Tim and I was like, did they just remake the first Top Gun? And Tim's like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I'm all for it. Uh, That's fucking great. This sequence was the, beautifully shot. Um, it's missing 
the I'll grain yes. and the, the 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 sort the of contrast graphics yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure but but and, I, and, I think and the I, last like the very last shot i love that they they mirror like the the shakiness of like someone like hand holding it like a clearly like it was like on sticks but then like in the original at the very end they just like somebody like nudges it and they just leave it in because they're like this is all the this is all the great footage that we got <laughs> and they, they do it again here too <laughs> Tim, I might have missed this in the uh, when you were going over the facts of the Furious, but did they shoot this on film or was this digitally acquired? Uh, Do you remember? Uh, well, it must be digital because this is it's all be digital, it's right? all yeah. IMAX. So like the uh, entire thing was shot with well, like insane IMAX cameras. So I guess it, yeah. it could have been film, but it was film. the it was the six K IMAX cams, which I think are the digital. Okay, because I could have sworn the first because the rest of the movie looked really really clean. And granted, they can take grain out of film, but this first part, I was like, I wonder if they shot just this first part on film because it still looked a little dirty. And it looked, I mean, I don't know, very, very well done. Is it, is it, is it treading on well-worn territory? Shut up. <laughs> what I'll say to you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, because we're about to cut over to this, uh, to Tom Cruise, right? And he's got this cool hanger, right? And he's got it on, on he's got this die, March, whatever, time to break, Mach 9. And he just knocks it, right? He gets that little knock. And then, of course, we see uh, pictures of Rooster when he was young, pictures of Miles Teller, uh, and then, of course, Miles Teller, like, full adult with incredible mustache and slash blonde hair. Uh, and then and then we see pictures of uh, him and, and Goose, Anthony Edwards from, uh, no, Anthony Edwards. Yes, Anthony yeah. Edwards from the original movie. Um, he heads over to the, the 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 facility and oh my god, Hondo's there. And by the way, Hondo played by I wrote the actor's name, Bashir some Bashir uh Salahuddin, uh is incredible. I love him in this. He's like, look, dude, mm -hmm. we just got a call from from General from Admiral Kane. We're shut down. And Maverick's like, bullshit, bro. I've had a Hell long no story career. Yeah, they can't <laughs> kick me out of this thing. And he's like, the Admiral's on his way. And he goes, but he's not here yet. And, of course, the stakes are set. If they're shut down, everyone loses their job. A little – when you start peeling back layers of this stuff, you're like, they still work for the Navy. They'll just right. get another job. It's not like everyone gets fired. These are all people that are enlisted. So, like, I can't imagine they're like, listen, you guys are highly specialized human beings in aerial combat and, like, breaking the sound barrier. You have to go work at a Starbucks now. This is There's their no dream. more need for you guys. <laughs> this is their dream project, though, yes, Nick. You yeah, can't rip yeah. them away from their baby, yeah. you know? I listen, this is my dream. And one day <laughs> Tim's going to have to fucking tear me away, kick me and screaming or do what I, what I assume will always do. He just leaves a trail of Starbucks iced coffees out the door and you guys shut up behind me. Mm -hmm. um, Hondo is this guy's name, which I love. I don't know mm -hmm. the, the, the significance of it other than it was Samuel L. Jackson's name in SWAT. And I fucking think that's super cool. Is it time, Tim, to rank the rest of the call signs? Oh, I think we have to. Let's just get it out of the way. Rank the call signs. We're going to rank the call signs, the call signs. <laughs> good. That Thank was you, good. Michael McDonald. <laughs> uh, we have a whole new host of call signs. As you guys know, last week we ranked a ton of these from the original movie. Number one right now, Iceman. Number two, Viper. Number three, Maverick. Number four, Sundown. Number five, Hollywood. I won't waste your time with the rest of these, although they're great number too. Five, we got Wolfman, Wolfman, Hollywood, Wolfman. Wolfman was six, unfortunately. We oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't know if you were here. Uh, starting <laughs> it off, we're going to start with the bottom of the list, Halo. I don't remember whose character was Halo, but there's a character named Halo, which is a badass name. Halo was – it was uh, the girl, the, the Asian yeah. girl that came. Oh, uh, right. Okay. When there was like the 12 people that could have right. been uh, – oh, right, right. that could have made yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So um, what do we, we want to put Halo above or below? We'll say Cougar or Jester or Goose. Halo's very low. Low. Above Lower Chipper or below Chipper? Okay. Around above, Chipper. Ch above I'd say chipper. above Chipper. We'll go above one above Chipper, chipper for Halo. Cool. Fair. All right. Uh, next up, we got Yale, which is a badass name. I'll it's be pretty cool. You. It's fucking cool. Uh, do we want to put that? I'll start the bidding at around Goose or Merlin. For so why -E? I'd say below Yale. Merlin. Yeah, yeah, I like below the college. Merlin. Yeah, I like the college. Okay. Uh, I don't love it. Okay. Above or below Charlie, Tim? Mm, I, I, I'm going to go below. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm called Charlie, then Yale. Yep. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I'm a Princeton man myself, so there you yeah, go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you are. I'm a Harvard man myself. Uh, can be both. Can be both. I can, <laughs> I can be both. Where do we, where do we want to put Hondo? He transferred. He transferred. Do we like Hondo more than Charlie or less than Charlie? More. Hondo's pretty damn cool. I like yeah. Hondo. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Above or below Cougar? Below. Um, okay. What yeah. about Slider? Above or below Slider? Okay. Above. Above. Okay. Yeah, I like Hondo. That. I like that. Uh, Fritz. 
I don't know. I don't know whose name was Fritz, but I guess one of the characters' name was Fritz. <laughs> one of the kids again, too. Fritz yeah. One of those kids. Yeah, put that. Put that low. Put that. I'll put low. that up. We'll put that above Chipper. How about that? That yeah, sounds fair. Sounds about right. Below Halo. Now hey, we're getting into some fun ones. Now, of course, this is this is this is heartbreaking for me, but I got to give this up. Hammer. Where do we want to put Hammer? Dude, I mean, it's really good. good. <laughs> yeah, Hammer's good. I mean, yeah. Above or below Goose. I'm gonna say above. above. It's, it's I'm gonna above. go above Goose. I'm gonna go above Merlin. I'm actually gonna go above Stinger. The question is: Is Hammer cooler than Wolfman? And I think the answer is yes. I don't. Oh, man. Here's my thing. I think Iceman is way cooler than Wolfman, and because of that, I'm gonna say it's above Wolfman. We're gonna put it above Wolfman. Sorry, man. Okay. Batson. I like that. Outvoted. That's okay. You I accept it. Wolfman is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Warlock. Fuck, oh, it's very name. cool. It's, it's, it's the so opposite cool. of Merlin, War, man. Yeah. We were talking shit Warlock. about Merlin, but like yeah. Warlock, Warlock is awesome. the cool Merlin. <laughs> we're, dude, I mean, I gotta put, I gotta put Warlock close to the top five. It's gotta yeah. be, yeah. Is I, it cooler I'd or less cool than below Sundown? Viper? Below um, Viper? Yeah. I, I think yeah, yeah. I what think was it's Viper probably number four? It was Ice, it went Iceman number one, Viper two, Maverick yeah, three. Viper. Do you want to yeah. put Warlock at number four? Number three, friend. dude. I War- think it's number three. three. Warlock above and Maverick, Maverick are, are coin toss for me. I'd put I it mean, above Maverick. I'm with Tim. I think that's Maverick. so cool. Yeah, I think that's this is so dope. If my dude, if you guys started calling me Warlock, Warlock. like I'd be okay. <laughs> Nick just wants to be called Warlock. Warlock. <laughs> uh, we're getting and into some Starbucks. of the more big star. Oh, Starbucks would be dope. Actually, it's got dude, the, that's got the Battle Star significant. I like that. Matt Matt Roybeck, uh tweeted at me. He said that he wanted his call name to be. Drew? To be either cold brew, which is awesome, it's so good, or blockbuster. <laughs> blockbuster is fucking rad. Do you think that blockchain you think I can and change? blockbuster? Yep. Andy, can you make a note? I will be changing my call sign to venti iced coffee, unsweetened, mm-hmm. no, 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 no milk at all. You won't all those, read it. All those it notes. doesn't matter. That all many notes. <laughs> you won't uh, read the note that I send to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Cyclone up next, which is uh, John Ham's character. Look, cool. Dude, I mean, look again. It is just kind of the generic cool, yeah. But the fact cool that it's fun. John Ham, it's yeah, like yo, man. everything about it. I think uh, Cyclone's actually really, really high. I, I, I want, feel like for I, me, I want to know Cy- Cyclone's okay. past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a Top Gun too. He was Top Gun. For yeah. Because for me, like seeing the John Ham that we get in this movie, it almost has the negative effect. Where like Goose, I feel like Goose, Goose makes Goose cool. But this cyclone, like you think cyclone, you think wild, it's crazy, it's spinning, it's fat. But this cyclone, very by the book, very straight laced, similar Whoa. to to like an ice man. And because so he's I don't. An admiral he, now. I feel like he brings it down. That's but the true. problem is, you have to go back to remember he was like he was the he was the winner of Top Gun in like '88, which was only a couple years after mm-hmm. Tom Cruise. That's true. So like I'm thinking cyclone was a badass back in the day. Me too. But unlike Tom Cruise, he was like, I got to grow the fuck up like Iceman did. Because I first off, I love that yeah. Iceman is just the admiral now yeah. of the entire second fleet of whatever the fuck, wherever the hell they are. Uh, that's incredible. Do we want to put Cyclone above or below Stinger? I say above Maverick. Above, above Maverick? I can't get, I can't I'd go, go I can't go Maverick. above. I say no. I say okay. no. Okay. Okay. Let's, below, let's go below let's, well, above, above Wolfman. <laughs> mm-hmm. Above Wolfman. Yeah. Above Hammer? Mm-hmm. No. I say I'd no. rather be called Cyclone. You'd rather be called Cyclone? Cyclone than Hammer? Cool. Yeah. What about Hollywood? Above or below? Oh, Hollywood? I love Hollywood. Come on. We're going to put that below Hollywood. <laughs> below okay. Hollywood. Okay. Okay. Hollywood's that's, a that's badass. Man. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bob. Bob's, Bob's like Number Goose, one. <laughs> dude. Bob's one of those ones no. where that, like, that joke could have really not worked, but it fucking did it because did, yeah. of that, dude. Like, they really, oh. they, they, they played it out in a perfect way. I don't know how high it could rank. I'll put him right below. I'll put him on board. That shit yeah. killed me, bro. That shit killed me. Oh, I'm gonna man. put it below Goose for now. I feel like He's I can't be put him That's low. Nobody gotta wants to be yeah. called Bob in the battlefield. You don't want to put him. I'll put Bob right below Goose. Uh, by the way, the guy that the actor that played that is Bill Pullman's son. I don't know if you know that. Oh, wow. I, guess, I saw his last name pop up. It's like Bob. Because, you know, they do the the cool, like, hey, what's up? I'm mugging to the camera for a second. Yeah. And they have the actor's name. It said something, something Pullman. I was like, oh, I wonder if he's related to Bill Pullman. It is Bill Pullman's son. And you start looking at him. You're like, oh, Bill Pullman, of course, the president, Mike, from Independence Day. Remember, mm. he's like, okay. today we celebrate Probably nepotism our independence. There, you know? What's that? Some nepotism there. Maybe he wasn't actually the top gun. Just his dad was the president. I mean, that's how I got this that's job. That's a good call sign, nepotism. Uh, <laughs> next up, we got Fanboy, which is kind of... 
what it, uh, it is what it is. I don't which like it. fun fun fact here about uh fanboy i went to the theater with the one and only gino viteri went to high school in elementary school with uh danny ramirez who played fanboy wow that's cool. pretty he's cool. also in uh winter soldier right yep falcon mm-hmm. winter soldier. yeah falcon yeah. winter soldier oh okay. that's right yep yeah this, they would have like shot this though before falcon winter soldier so yeah he definitely looks uh, a bit younger yeah I'm gonna put I, like fan, I like it, but I feel like they didn't do anything in the movie nah. to, 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 yeah, to justify that name. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to put it below Slider above Charlie. I'm putting it a little bit. Okay. I'm cool with that. Like that. Yeah, me too. Um, next up, we have Payback. I mean, Payback fuck is you. Good. Fuck you. It's fucking awesome. That's so <laughs> yeah. dope. That's so cool. Uh, I would put Payback for sure above Merlin, for sure above Stinger. Is it better than Wolfman and Hammer? I'll put it maybe one above Wolfman. How do we feel about that? I'd go above hammer. Yeah, I'd go above okay. hammer. Yeah. But does it break above cyclone? The break no. the cyclone. Okay. There it's close. There's though. something about like, you know, we're gonna get to Phoenix, right? And I think Phoenix yeah. is on the is on the cyclone level in terms of like it's a cool noun, but payback is a verb, and that's cool. Yeah. Like that makes it so right. much cooler. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, you're right. Where do we want to put Phoenix then? Because Phoenix is next up on the list. Phoenix is up. Really? Yeah. That, that that high middle, that high middle for sure. Phoenix is a badass name. I'd go low middle because I think that it, it it we have to look at it of how badass is the name and what did they do with it. I feel like yeah. it's a badass name and it didn't live up to its expectations yeah. for me. So I put it. You know, I, she, 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 she was badass. badass. She, had a great she was start. badass. Yeah. But I feel like right. comparing it to the name Phoenix, like yeah. I don't think she did anything that was Phoenix like. Mm. Right. You also, know what I mean? She what's said, the... "Oh, you're my back seat instead of my Rio," and my I felt Rio. a little right. bit there. Rio. I, like, what's up? Yeah. I liked Rio, but yeah. back seat is cool too. But like That's the Rio's cool. way cooler, you know. Rio's where do cool. we want to put? So you, above or below Wolfman is where I'm going to start debating on this. Below one. Wolfman, below above Wolf. or below Stinger? Above, it's, a, it's above. Stinger. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's put it right there. Yeah. Perfect. Happy you spot. guys are we're crushing this. You know what's funny <laughs> is like when we do these lists without Greg. He's so much easier. You know what I mean? Better. So much fucking easier. Efficient. God. Uh, all right. Hangman. Where do we want to put Hangman? I I like hangman. Man. I Go like for it, Andy. It's the logo for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That's your yes. that ass. It's the know? fact the that like the A yeah. is missing and like yeah. stuff to look, make it look like an actual Hangman game. That's kind of what does it for me. We're like, I don't necessarily love the name. I love the dude as an asshole. He's I love the good. dude yeah. as they somebody. They give you the good who, line, too. Yeah. Uh, I love the dude as somebody who kind of comes back and makes it all better. Like, he just killed it, dude. I would say I would say I'd put as a, as a name as a character all at jazz easily top Ugh. above or below Cyclone. Where do we want to go? See, here's the thing: I think Cyclone is infinitely cooler than yeah. Hangman. Yeah, but right. they fucking for what I just said, Phoenix didn't and Fanboy didn't do. They did with Hangman. They like, nailed it. It was yeah. pitch perfect. I think it has to be high because the actor was great. The storyline was perfectly teed up and god damn i don't think i've ever felt that excited in a movie theater like it was captain america getting mjolnir <laughs> when fucking hangman wow. shows when so, so. Oh, <laughs> let's wow. put let's put hangman uh, well, let's put him above cyclone then how about above or below hollywood what do we feel i just think hollywood's just the i want to be cool. Cool. Let's go, we'll, yeah. put, we'll put hangman right below hollywood all right finally <laughs> we got rooster where do we want to put rooster i'm kind of torn man like I love it, but I just, I just love it. I'm not yeah, like yeah. fucking obsessed. I mean, they with they, with there's a lot of birds, you know. There's a lot of yeah. birds they could have gone with, and I, you know, rooster. Just well, it's gotta sound favorite. like goose, it's right? Like, yeah, yeah. They I, I name prefer them, like, duck. Falcon. I yeah. prefer duck. <laughs> Fowl. Duck. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. I don't know. I'll let someone and else not, choose not this one. Not the best. Probably towards the middle low. Middle low for sure. Swine. Let's go above or below goose. I'd rather Hello. be called Rooster than Goose. Really? Okay. Oh, oh no, Rooster's bad. I like when they were like, he's always sitting there waiting for his time, but his time never comes. And I was like, oh, that shit's so lit, bro. All right, that actually is pretty <laughs> That's fun. a cool that line. Fucking cool. <laughs> you want to be over? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> All right, we'll put him right above dear old dad. I love it. There you go. It turns out, ladies and gentlemen, the top five did not change. We got, oh no, we did change. I'm sorry. Number yep. one, Iceman. Number two, Viper. Number three, Warlock. Number four, Maverick, and number five, Sundown, followed by Hollywood, Hangman, Cyclone, Payback, Hammer, Wolfman, and Phoenix rounding out the top ten. I don't Hell know yeah, dude. That's that the coolest cool list that. we have ever had on this show. That's pretty <laughs> badass. And now, back to the plot. Plot, plot, 
plot and D. I lost my window. Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, thank you, Andy. <laughs> oh, we're still in the testing facility, right? So, of course, uh, as Edgar, yes. as Hammer pulls up, uh, the plane takes off. And this plane is just super cool, right? They make a lot of mention of fifth gen fighters, all these things. This looks like a stealth bomber. I'm not quite sure yeah. what it's set up. This for. is like the PS5 of planes. Yep. You know? yep. It's so cool. And, of course, Maverick takes it up, Easier hits Mach get. 9, blows right past just- that. Uh, and then approaches Mach 10 as Ed, as Ed Harris watches, uh, and then he hits a Hold Mach on. 10. So this scene, you're speeding through it. Yeah, and it's the yeah, best scene. I, I it's one of the like, best scenes of the movie. This is one of the greatest movie openings of all fucking time, and there's so much about it that's cool because him taking off when the dude pulls up and he like gets out of the car and then the the plane <gasps> flies blows over. The fucking top that, off that so was practical. That shot, practical in one take because they yeah. didn't mean for the that building for that like to, to for that building for the fucking, roof to yeah. fall up. <laughs> so they're and like, so I they, guess that's the shot. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and like was, just watching that scene, I'm like, holy shit! Like I I be- of everybody, I believe Ed Harris would just sit there and just stand and like not not flinch at all through that oh, that <laughs> was, was incredible that was well, badass that he did that i did not realize that was practical i was like oh that's one of the cg things that they must have done right mm-hmm. that was insane mm-hmm. um but yeah that being followed up with the most like they just start this movie off with the most anime shit ever and you think oh it can't get better than this and then it does but like it literally defining the rules that we need of okay mach 9's on the calendar that's what he has to hit and immediately like no no no, nine's not gonna be yeah, good yeah, enough we need you to go to 10 and then the guy's like no, 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 don't go above 10, though. I know you. Don't yeah. go above 10. They just set it up so perfectly for Tom fucking Cruise to just do his thing and wow us all. Like, I believe in magic oh. when I watch this scene. <laughs> so he goes, cool. I and know also- that face. And he goes, this is the only face I got. And it's like, oh, he's going to do something. He's going to do something. And the the way that this also like calls back to the original movie in like a very like tasteful way, like it's not corny where Again, we're starting out like showing off who Maverick is and him being like maximum Maverick, like with his ego and him going over Mach 10, but also in that he's doing this for somebody else. He's doing it for all these people so team. that they don't have to work at Starbucks, right? Well, he's, uh, he's uh, doing to, it for to the to pilots, them. right? Like that's the yeah. thing too is he's proving to the, the military that pilots still need to be there and that's an underlying theme as well. Exactly, but and then yeah, just like in the first one, he's saving uh, Cougar's life but also he's showing off all he does it and he gets in trouble, but he's, it's just so good. He's so good. And, and also just the cinematography, like yeah, that, um, the, those shots, um, the showing massive skyscape and it's yes. just this little tiny ship making that big kind of curve. Like, uh, Oh, it's just so good, dude. I also love the, the meta, like they don't really call attention to it, but when he needs to go a little bit faster, he just pitches the plane downward to like let gravity take him just a little bit faster. And they just have him like that little, that little bit of like that beautiful shot of just him just kind of pushing it. He's like, uh, push it just a little bit and then everything goes nuts all at once. And then the whole screen just goes dark for for the comm center, like HQ. Incredible. Incredible. Also, what is the name? What is the name of this place? Because it was a super badass name. Yes. You're clear to take on. And when they say that, it's like, oh, this is badass, bro. And that final scene when it blew up, like, People in the audience were wowed. They were like, oh, like you could see it and you were blown away by how beautiful Dude, that shot was. No, straight up. I mean, it, it was like watching Last Jedi for the first time. And when there's the the moment where they do the cuts the, the, the cuts through it, yes. the Star Destroyer thing, it was like that. Out. And I yeah. did not expect that from a fucking Top Gun movie. But literally, it is like take your breath away. Like we didn't need the song because they just fucking did the action. Yes. Like it That's- was so powerful and like the score behind it was just so like it felt like the ultimate sacrifice end of a movie moment but they're just like no man we're going into this and when it builds up and you see him going faster and faster and then you have the it cuts to the guy he's like he's the fastest man alive (laughs) (laughs) fuck yes he is (laughs) so cheesy and perfect it's perfect um a lot of the shots here reminded me of uh bats you'll remember this the 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 movie that uh what's his butt did after La La Land, First Man, I think is what it was called, where he played Neil Oh, Armstrong. yeah, with Gosling, yeah. Yeah, and he just had, it had a lot of that same, like, just shots of the horizon, shots of, like, the, the stratosphere, like, because I think that was about him flying higher or whatever, but this was beautiful sequence. Of course, it ends with uh, all the screens going black, and then uh, we see someone walk down a road, and Maverick walks into a random diner. Uh, it was in, called in no- Cecil's Diner, named after Kevin's dog. It's, yeah. it's what the movie effects Fun fact. I, I love that. Uh, I also want to I want to shout out to the fact that uh, whatever this plane was, and I'm sure it's a real plane, uh, reminds me a lot of there used to be an old uh, supersonic 
uh, spy plane called the SR-71 that used to be stationed out at March Air Force Base in Riverside where I grew up. And I used to, my dad took me out to see it a bunch of times. It looked very much like this, very, 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 very long, just all engine. Uh, and I think one of the Transformers was a, was a, a Blackbird. Mm-hmm. Um, one Starscream. of the, the fact, uh, what's that? Was it Starscream? Uh, it might have been. No, no, no. Starscream was a was a. I think he was an F fourteen. Oh yeah, yeah. He was an F. Sorry, he was an F something. The yeah, SR seventy yeah, one was like this. Is it's called? It was called the Blackbird. It was just this crazy oh. ass. Like oh, it was Jet the older Storm. guy. Jet Storm. Jet Storm. That's what it was. Yeah. Jet anyway, Fire. Super sorry. cool. I'm being anyway, this plane looks like it's a, it's a spiritual success. Jet Wash. That. <laughs> Wash uh, Maverick walks in, uh, points at a glass of water, and then asks, where are we? And this little kid at the bar, just a great little performance here, goes, Earth. It's amazing. <laughs> and everybody laughs, bro. Scene. Everybody yeah. laughs. Fucking great. So kind of cheesy, but whatever. No, dude, I'll allow yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, but, but that's, that's the so thing. good. Yeah, no way. This movie, like, it knows it's cheesy, and it has to be cheesy to succeed. And I, I feel like the, the cheesiness combined with the endearing moments of like him reaching out for the water like it it's believable cheese ability you know and i'm here for it me too uh of course this does not go over well with admiral hammer who is uh like listen man i would end your career right now you're you've been saved by Iceman over and over again but this i would end your career if not for the fact that we need you one last time we got an operation going over on i think they call it like north island or something like that oh, it had a cool yep. code name for it and he's like he's like i hate to do this but you got to go back to top gun and maverick's like oh okay cool uh of course we saw the original uh maverick motorcycle as he was driving to break mach 9 and this time he gets an updated version of the uh the 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 kawasaki that he drove the ninja that he drove uh which is just badass and he's driving once again over in miramar san diego that's in california in an, tim in an updated version of the theme too of the top that's gun right theme. Updated, which, yep. which if you want to let's talk about the music in this because i'm i'm of two minds on this mm-hmm. I love hearing the theme. I love the first time use of Danger Zone. But what I miss is the other 15 times they should have used Danger Zone in this, and right. they didn't do that. And it's missing one person in particular that I feel like instead of, I mean, this is no disrespect to Lady Gaga. I love her work very much. Uh, enjoyed watching the documentary Super Bowl performance a few years back. Mm-hmm. One of the best I've ever seen in my entire life. For very sure. much admire her. But if I had to pick between Lady Gaga, who is obviously a very very still very relevant incredibly high level working musician today or kenny loggins who i have to assume is playing uh fairs around the country mm-hmm. i would have picked k-log why did they K-Log. not get an original song from k-log in this yeah beyond very beyond me yeah like do you K-Log. even know your audience tom cruise jesus Christ. i think they hit their quota for danger zone though in the last movie <laughs> <laughs> they went overboard yeah, yeah. Exactly. Gone over there, there was a couple times. moments like you bring that up nick like when they're at the bar, right, the first scene, and Hangman goes to the jukebox, could have been a great moment for Danger Zone, but they yep. didn't play Danger Zone. You thought it was coming, and then it didn't, and then you know, that, they went to the Great Balls thing, of Fire. Because is, is Danger Zone a song in the universe of Top no. Gun? but Great Balls of Fire is. The great and Balls about, of Fire yeah. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're about to get to that, because, of course, he goes to the hard deck which is the ba- the Great coolest name. name for a bar ever. Yeah. And honestly, this bar looks like it's a real bar, and I hope it's a real bar. And I hope they made that bar after Top Gun, and it was inspired by Top Gun. But of course, that bar is run by none other than Admiral's daughter. Oh, actually, I think he reports to uh, to a Cyclone first, and Cyclone's like, I don't want you here, but whatever, we'll get to that right. in a second. Admiral's right. daughter, uh, Penny Benjamin, which was a random one-off reference in the first movie that was never intended to be a fleshed-out character. But I'm glad someone pitched jennifer connelly on this so hard they got her in this movie and i'm so glad they did because she is awesome uh the, do i so believe this, that she runs this bar no no <laughs> but it doesn't matter the, so this is interesting because yeah. uh when i when i watched it the first time and i was just kind of like i don't know who this is and it, i'm right there with you matt where it felt like we're supposed to know who she is and i thought that that was weird but nick leaned over to me last night i was just like yo that's it's the admiral from the first one i was like oh okay i do remember that offhanded whatever comment um and i'm right there with y'all this is like not the best part of the movie but i do think that jennifer connelly is an inspired choice for the actress like just she represents that era so well even though she wasn't in the first movie like it fits it works and like it feel it has that kind of reverence for the 80s in a way that i think is is pretty she, cool she definitely elevates the movie i just wonder if she elevates it a little too much because i almost feel like the scene she's in she's I'm like you guys got jennifer connelly for this <laughs> it's kind of crazy sorry mike you had your hand up oh see i'm on the opposite side of all of you i actually really liked this love interest and i i, I could feel i like the flirtation 
uh, nature that they both had. I think you could feel the vibes, the flirting. And I like the story that we got of, of course, Maverick and who he's been and what he's done and kind of the backstory with her and their relationship of like, you were here with me, then you had to leave and go on to the next one and the next one, right? And then kind of Rooster looking at him of like, you know, you are Maverick, you have no one, you don't have a family, you don't have a wife, right? And then like, I liked their relationship building up to Tom Cruise looking at her going, I'm going to stay, I'm here, right? And then of course he gets the moment where it's like, I'm going out again, like I got to go, you know? But like, I actually really liked this love interest. I think it built up. It wasn't as good, of course, as the line of, it's going to get complicated, but right. it was still very good. I, I actually am on the opposite side. I liked these two together. Um, of I course. enjoyed it too, especially like the same moment with the callback that we had just seen of like, don't make that face. And like, so, you know, like he's, he's, like he's smiling, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> but uh, you could just tell that this is an old flame that she doesn't want to recommit to because she's had her heart broken before. I'm with Mike. I kind I liked it more than I didn't for sure. Um, I think I s- for 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 this like it for me it was just built on like this foundation of a lie to me of like I don't know who this is like you you just said one line this wasn't a real character and I think Jaycon like gives a solid performance all around but J-Con. but but it, it's just always in the back of my head where I'm like I don't know you and then this opening scene where they talk to her Andy like she's acting. And I think maybe like the Applebee's commercials that have been running during the playoffs have really messed with me. Where this this place feels like an Applebee's with it this does. crowd. And you know and why? Then... Because of the way it was lit. That was yes. that was the only that was a kind of a thing that took me out of it. Was she's lit so perfectly in this that yeah. like if you remember that like the bar he goes into when he first meets Kelly McGillis. It's like darker, it's kind of mm-hmm. seedier. It's got there's no there's like a haze in the environment because people were smoking butts back then. And this one she really does look like she's about to sell you a bloomin' onion or whatever yeah. they sell at, at Applebee's. It kind of comes <laughs> off like 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 top gun light a little bit. Um we, not we I mean need again, smoke. We need people ripping heat. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'll say it right now. There's, it's a different age. There's do one that. shot of someone sweating in this movie. Yeah. Okay. Contrast Let, that. No, no, sweat, we're, not enough. I mean, sweat. Not We're there's one I feel like there's one scene that's got all the sweat. Makes up We're for all of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just yes. sweat um, bullets. Yeah, you sweating bullets well, at one point. But, but yeah, we... the way that she talks to him too is like it's just like uh Ed Helms in the office in Threat Level Midnight, where he's playing the generic bartender of like, hey, my old buddy, what's got you down type of thing. And yeah. it, it felt like that instead of you know, like an old flame that he actually knew. Like I was like, are they tricking me? Who it's who is this person? It's it's one of those where like again, I wish it had been just a friendship relationship. Mm-hmm. It's also really, really, really hard to write that backstory where there was none and have the two characters who probably don't know each other very well in real life, like have that camaraderie. That's why like specifically when you have a cast of people that you want to become like famously when they shot Goonies, right? Uh, uh, Richard Donner had all the kids like hang out and live together for like a month in a motel and party so that they had that, that feeling of like, we are actually have bonded as friends and have history together. This one felt like this might've been the first time they had met the, during this scene, maybe they had talked a couple times before that, and the dialogue didn't help too much. I almost wish it had been like, "Oh, I remember you from a long time ago, but we didn't really know each other." But I don't know. Yeah, it's. I think you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, because I think they were like, "Well, let's put, a, let's try to put as much heart in this as possible and have this person be a real person, like a real character, as opposed to so a lot of the other '80s um, love interests that are just kind of placeholder for there for 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 the." The protagonist. Um, I skipped the scene though. It's an important scene where John Ham's like, "Hey, here's the mission. We have this uranium plant in this nondescript enemy country, so that yep. this movie can play yep. everywhere yep. in the world and not piss off the Russians or the Chinese or the it, any of the people that we may or may not have beef with these days." I would have uh, liked if they would have like retconned uh, the first one and they just make up a country. They're just like they just just a brand new country and they're evil. And that's all you got to know. The same it's, people from the first one. They might as well because they yeah. just refer to our enemy as our enemy. Uh, and they refer to the fighter pilots or, or the, they don't even say the name of jets in this that the enemies mm-hmm. are flying. They just call them fifth gen fighters. So as not to piss Which off. Which is somehow that, cooler though. Like that's, I mean, that's the anime shit that Andy's mm-hmm. talking about where I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, man. And yeah, this scene and they is look so dope. rad. They look fucking, they look cool. Like you can just visually tell that those are better and doper and more powerful. But They're just se- the setup of the, the dual mountain ranges as like the, the trench run we're doing where it's like, cool, there's the zigzag that leads into mm-hmm. the two inclines and yes. we need both shots to get perfectly. And I'm like, 
Y'all have sold me. Thank you. Like, it, this is where Too the Fast Five points. stuff comes into this, where it's like, it is the perfect heist, where it's like, there's one thing they need to do that the whole movie is centered around. So we are getting used to all the different elements. So by the time they actually do the course at the end, you're everything know that they the do, stakes. you know exactly yeah, yes, what they're yes. doing. You know exactly what the oh. stakes are. It's fucking great. Uh, and a great, great line as well, where he's like, he's like, you know, Cyclone here finished top of his class in 88. He's Top Gun. And he's like, just so you know, I came in second. Is that an expectation? Yeah, he's like, I just want to like, set no, expectations. He's like, Maverick was first. Like, just so you know, I love that line. I just want to set expectations. I also love the line with, uh, I think he has a great rapport with Warlock, who you can tell they're like, oh, they're all like okay. old friends, where he's like, I was uh, I was very surprised to be invited back. And Warlock goes, they're called orders. They're called orders. <laughs> <laughs> an invitation. So good. Uh, these guys, these guys shared the screen together. It's great. Uh, of course, they ask him, like, what would you do? He says, I'd do two pairs of fighter jets. You got to have, we have to go old school on this because they have to be able to fly below a certain, they have to basically be able to fly 100 feet above the air. And uh, next gen jets can't do that. But the old F-18 Hornets can. Uh, so what I would do is grab a bunch of Hornet pilots, train them up, how to do this trench run. And then uh, one shoots, like blows a hole in this thing. And the other person throws a freaking photon torpedo down this, this gullet. And he has to turn off his guidance uh, mm -hmm. and just use the force as well. Uh, miracle number one, miracle number two is what we'll call these. And Maverick's like, I can do it. He goes, we, oh, you misunderstood me. We don't want you to do it, Maverick. We want you to train the younger, better versions of you to do it. You're going back to Top Gun, of course. He goes to the bar, and that's where well, the, the big problem here, of course, oh, is like the, the Jump I'm, Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought the same 23 thing. Jump Street. Wait, that's <laughs> not right. Uh, of course, the, the big con land of contention here is one of the best pilots in the world of, is, is Goose's son, uh, Bradley Rooster Bradshaw. And Maverick's like, oh, no, I got to watch this kid out because I promised his mom I wouldn't let him uh, be in any danger. Anyway, fast forward to the bar. Maverick can't pay his tab. And so Hangman played by, I forget the actor's name that plays Hangman. Uh, Glenn Powell, I think. Glenn, Glenn Powell. Powell. We I love great. him. Glenn Love Powell. Watson. Right. We That's meet the a whole cast. in the making right now. Yeah, going to be a absolutely. We meet the whole cast. Of course, we meet all all of the the call signs of the the, the new hot young hot shot pilots. Uh, we got the hangmans. We got the paybacks. We got the uh, fanboys, Bob's Coyote, Coyote Phoenix. All of these people have come, and they have no idea what they're there for. Uh, Phoenix has the great line after Brewster kind of comes in, and you feel like they're friends, but maybe they are more mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, yes, where, yes. Where, they had that little play back and forth. A little like, back oh, maybe they were banging. You know what I mean? Hot yes. You never know. You never know. Bob. Bob has the great intro here that oh where he, he like spills the drink on him. So he's, they're like, when did you get here? He's like, I've been here the whole time. And she goes, oh, he's a stealth pilot. <laughs> he's yeah. a stealth bomber pilot. So <laughs> and then, and then, and then he says, no, I actually do this. And like, and they're like it's, it's perfect. Uh, she, of course, has the banger line where she's like, what the hell are we doing here? Like, we're the best of the best. Who are they going to get to teach us? Uh, and then Maverick's watching this whole thing happen. And he gets thrown out because he can't pay his tab. And apparently they got a lot of rules in this bar with a small sign. Yeah. And I have to imagine phone, people are yeah. starting fights. I like that. I like that. I like I, that. Yeah. You know what gives me anxiety, guys? If we can, if we can pull back the curtain a little bit on old Nick Scarpino, I know. Let's Andy, do it. <laughs> I know that I come off as this cool dude, super well yeah. put together, never loses my shit at all. I would walk into this bar and see the three hundred Navy and Air Force and all these people in there, and the one bartender, and I would go, "Yeah, no, later. No, nope. this is gonna take yeah. me fucking four hours to get a drink. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's not gonna Nick. Happen. Why aren't you wearing? Why, why aren't you wearing your aviators? By the way, because uh, yeah. I can't see through them to read. Mm. <laughs> now can, can we pause really quick because you glossed over of course miles teller showing up who looked incredible right off the rip like he gets out of that out of that truck and it's just like oh man this man is tanned and toned yes. mustache summers all around this outfit that too that he's great, rocking bro. He, he says, incredible. fuck a flight suit, dude. I'm in a Hawaiian <laughs> t-shirt, man. Yeah. In, in that old school Ford Bronco, like the redone yeah. Ford Bronco. So oh. cool. Just screams, I have not a care in the world, and I'm a fighter pilot. Super cool. Anyway, uh, uh, Hangman throws him out, calls him an old man, and then, of course, has that wonderful Maverick moment the next day when the, when uh, Warlock says uh, who the instructor is, kind of mirrors that the, uh, the, the jester moment where he introduces Captain uh, uh, Viper, uh, and he's like, hey, it's going to be Maverick. And the, the look on Hangman's face is like, fuck. God, it's so good. So it's the Charlie yeah. scene all over yeah. again. It's the bar where the he's scene. macking on her, just like Hangman throws him out, and then he sees him. He's like, "God damn it, you got me!" You know, it's like, "Oh, that's so cool." Uh, of course, uh, Maverick's like, they're like, well, we're the best of the best. What could you possibly train us to do? And he's like, well, we'll see. Uh, I think he has, he does great the great, he does the great thing where he has the manual and he's like, this is the manual for, for mm -hmm. the plane. Everything you need to know is in here, throws it in the trash and the enemy knows it too. It's so yeah. good. I was, I was just like, uh, he has, <laughs> he, yeah, I love that part. And yeah, he, he follows that up with something where they're like, what, 
what could you possibly teach us? And he says something cool, and I can't remember what it was. Is this it was the so, first time, time where he says, point. oh, that's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. I'm going to find your breaking point, and I'm going to take you past it, because that's what the enemy can't do, because it's the person inside the box. And that's it's like, what it was. Oh, shit, cool. bro. It's the person Man inside, inside the, the box. box. Yeah, that's is this the first time that he says it's not the plane, it's the pilot? That might have been. Um, might have been here, too. But either way, I think that is sort of the ongoing theme of this. For we sure. go into our first hop. They don't call it that. They call them a maneuver. Uh, and the first set of planes, I believe, is – I think it's Hangman and I think it's Phoenix and her Rio. Um, and they make the bet. They're like, I want to make this a little bit more interesting. Old man, we're going to smoke your ass. Whoever whoever gets shot down first has to do 200 push-ups. Now, I'll tell you what, this right now, guys. We're a team here. Andy, I go – I Mike, everyone, I die for you guys. Having said that, if you get my ass into a push-up contest like this, I'm not doing them. I didn't agree to this. Right. I didn't agree to this. I would. You didn't radio back to 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 my house and be like, Nick, are you down for this? I'd be like, no, I'm not doing fucking 200 push-ups. Are you kidding me? Forget about that. Anyway, I spread it, I spread it over like 48 hours, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's fair. 50 this days. is when the fun begins, right here, right now, as the music kicks on, and he's like, good morning, pilots. Welcome to flight school, right? And you're like, oh, shit. And then they're flying right next to each other. And the best scene is the kickoff where he just shoots through the two of them. And, and it's like, oh, it's fucking up. on from this point forward. <laughs> and then you get a five-minute epic scene of just all this. You know, it's so good. Incredible. Dude, this whole scene, I think, was done so well where we get the bar scene. And they introduce us to, like, no less than, like, 15 fucking characters at once. And I remember the first time watching it where I was like, oh, man, I, there's no way I'm going to care about these characters. Like, And I was fucking wrong by the end of it. And I was wrong because of scenes like this. I think they did such a good job of getting right into the action, but treating the action as character moments, right? Like getting us to, to understand the difference between these pilots and how they work as a team, how they aren't perfectly working as a team yet, but they're going to. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, shit, you just you accomplished what you had to. And what the first one didn't even attempt to do, right? Like the first yeah. one, like Mike mm -hmm. was saying, it's like, yeah, we get a couple people named but like that's essentially that's it. it with that's this character yeah there's connections between them all and they all have relationships with each other and relationships with maverick now and i just think that they did a really good job of uh from one scene to another back to back me going i don't know that i'm gonna care about them to oh i 100 percent care about all of them and hangman is a fucking asshole he's yeah. a perfect asshole oh he's <laughs> so good it, it would have fit really in so moments. well in the original top gun and oh, i think like that's dude he, that's he like and, my favorite thing oh. about him He's like the, Iceman cranked up to 11, which I he, really loved. Like yes. the playback between him and Rooster, you feel it like Maverick and Iceman. Mm -hmm. And there's some really fun moments in this. Like when they first lose and the kids start taking the selfie over him doing push-ups. And then Hondo yes. comes back. He's like, y'all were having fun with those selfies, weren't you? And it's like, As oh, everybody's doing push-ups. <laughs> um, of course, uh, the last group to go is Maverick and Rooster. And they get into a what they call a Cobra dive. Yeah, because Maverick decides to just go to do the inverted thing on him, and then oh, Goose that was is like so "fuck you" nasty. and starts diving, and they're just diving in a cyclone of badassery. Of course, they break the hard deck. Uh, Cyclone's like, "You will not break the hard deck again." Uh, what's up, Andy? Just the most anime sequence. Right? So yes, bad. like the cutting back and forth between both people in the cockpit. You need to you need to pull the plane up, blah blah blah. Like, no, you never cared about me or my father, blah blah. But you, you never care. Blah, blah. And like, it just keeps on cutting back, and all I need are like the colored backgrounds with the squiggly lines. Yeah, like yeah. an anime. It, this sequence was so perfectly well done while showing the danger involved in everything because we know five thousand feet. The hard deck. Five thousand feet is the hard deck. Five thousand. Yeah. We know. Yeah, five thousand feet is the hard deck, and they are at. 300 feet <laughs> like yeah they are pushing it to the fucking limit until they eventually both decide to pull up and i just it, they just well, they do such note. a great job with sort of managing expectations and making sure that you are going to be really wowed and on the edge of your seat knowing that how dangerous this all really is important note to maverick pulls up first which is yeah, he did, right? He did. And that's what's so cool about this is I, I, I think, and, and that's why I wanted more of this character dynamic is that I like the setup for Rooster. Rooster is basically Iceman from the last movie, right? He's not a dick, but he is calculated, and he, but he's not a hothead. He doesn't trust his instincts. He just kind of does. He plays it cool and, and, and keeps it in reserve a little too much. And Maverick, of course, the whole point of him is to teach him how to be, how to just get out of his that analytical part and just react right don't think just do is what he keeps telling him to do that um which i like uh mike you had your hand oh, up th yeah this is our first confrontation between rooster and maverick too which is really really cool right because he walks in and rooster kind of shoots him the look and then looks away right but this mm -hmm. is the first time 
where it's like, oh, these two are about to square up and talk. Right. And the coolest is the shot of the planes, right? Because the two are going wing to wing and Maverick is behind him. And they're like, where's Maverick? And he's like, I'm right fucking here. And then he flips on top of Rooster. And then like Andy, inverted, Andy said, yeah. right? now we have the fucking square off where these two are in the devil nose dive. And it's like, this is the epic way to kick off this Dude, relationship right now. The shot of, from the cockpit Rooster's perspective, of Tom Cruise's fucking plane going inverted above him oh, is the is insane. The second coolest shot in this whole movie, I will say, because I will it, say, I'll just say it right now, the first coolest shot, and this is the one that gave me like the feeling of inertia that I so it was so hype that I actually looked at Tim was when top when Tom Cruise takes off in the jet from the carrier. And you're just oh. with him the whole time. And he, oh, he, he has that little it. stutter to yeah. Yes, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable moment of just pure cinematography on that one. But, but again, digress. like talking about like this, this relationship and this dynamic and how they establish it. Like, I think it's so important and so cool. The escalation of before they get in the plane, you know, uh, maverick is like hey bradley like he's trying to get his attention and like talk to him beforehand and he doesn't want any of it because they don't do their talking with their mouths on the ground they do their yeah. talking with their planes in the sky <laughs> with their 80 million dollar planes in the yes. skies. um of course Cycl cyclone does not like this he's like we have a hard deck for reasons for your pilot's safety and and tom cruise is like he's like if you want to make any like changes or whatever it was like we, he's like but tom cruise is like well yeah but we have to we have to practice low in our in our defense. We have to practice this going lower because we're supposed to be like 100 feet off the ground for the op. And he's like, that's not yada, yada, yada. You're out of this. And you got to do a formal thing if you want to do that. Of course, Tom Cruise hands him an envelope right there. That's like, he's like, what is this? He goes, it's a formal request to uh, lower the hard deck to like a thousand <laughs> feet to which Warlock rolls his eyes. And as they're walking out, he goes, we got to have a conversation about your timing. That was <laughs> so line. good. Yep. Uh, we get some back and forth here of the pilots realizing that uh, Bradshaw is, of course, Goose, uh, Goose's son who used to fly with Matt. Maverick, we have a little uh, confrontation there. Hey, man's just being a dick to get in his head. Hey, man, Dude, of course. I, I don't know when this happens, but at some point, uh, someone looks at Hey, man, and is like, you look good. He's like, oh, I am good. Very good. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's so badass. Good. Dead, that was so good, bro. Uh, fantastic. Um, during the training whole whole sequence, Maverick reunites with Penny. She tells him, "No, we're not gonna we're not gonna go back down this road again." Leaves him at the door. Uh, at one point, we're skipping kind of ahead here because uh, I'm reading off the Wikipedia here, and they don't really have too much here. But uh, at one point, uh, she takes him sailing. I thought this part was fucking great. Yeah. Where she's crushing it on the water, and she's like, "Boy, you're not comfortable with boats. You're in the navy. yeah. You're in the navy." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, I don't like boats at all. I fly planes at this, which is hilarious. Th this um, whole thing is the stuff that I was like, I think I could have cut it. But didn't need it. Didn't it wasn't need it. Uh, again. Nothing was horrible about yeah. it. I just think that how high and amazing the rest of the movie is. Yeah. Like this is the relationship stuff. I'm like, yeah, ah, does, it doesn't do it for me. You're right. And we talked about this a little when you were moving your car. That was that was a big point of contention for me too. Not point of contention is a strong word. Didn't need this. Would have liked to have seen the time spent with these two with Miles Teller and mm -hmm. Tom Cruise. I think they had, I, I was much more interested in their dynamic than this dynamic, but seeing Jennifer Connelly on screen and, and acting is always awesome, so who cares? Mm -hmm. um, the daughter stuff, eh, whatever. Um, they end up, we'll skip ahead, they end up banging eventually because she's like, you know, I'm gonna leave that door open. And Mike, when Jennifer Connelly leaves the door open for you, bro, you gotta watch I it. I mean, look, I'm great like, sequence, come on. great oh, sequence. Man. Fantastic, that's the thing is like, I, I, I can talk all the shit that I want, but when she leaves that door open, I'm like, oh. this is awesome and, then, and all, dialogue there i thought was so good yeah. like the talking about meg ryan's character like all of this was just like perfect top gun lore yeah oh, we get the back I, I we get the backstory that. for uh why he's mad at him because tom cruise held him back from flight school or mm -hmm. whatever it was and set him back four years which didn't doesn't seem to me like something you would be that pissed off about but whatever i guess he was pissed off about that i like that and i i prefer that over him being just mad about his dad dying because yeah. i think that that's a, that's a little trite and like right. fair, whatever i i thought that this was a good enough reason and i think that it was it became a great reason when the meg ryan factor gets involved and he's mm -hmm. like i'm gonna take i'm gonna be the dark knight here yeah like, yeah. I'm not going to let her take the credit for it, which is I, I love. Right. Yeah. We talked about it earlier with Nick of like, I like when he makes a commitment to her of like, I'm not, I'm not going out the window anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here to stay. And then, of course, we have the little flashback, but he falls and down. And she makes him go out the window. <laughs> yep. With the daughter, right? And she's like, just don't break her heart again. Cause you know, they got history, right? Like, that's what's yeah. leading up to this moment. And I like that a lot. I felt it. it it's it's a great moment, but it's so strange too because it's so comedic for him to have to go out the window again and then falling and then her being there and then the audience is like, and it's like oh shit, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> she she's really you know 
sad about this and doesn't want him to hurt her mom. When the jacket first fell, I thought it was him. It yeah, like, it looked like, yeah, it, looked like a, it looked like a weird like dummy that fell down. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of threw me um, off. We go next to the next hop. Uh, they're now practicing the uh, the trench run and all that stuff. We get a lot of uh, roosters just too slow. He's too slow. We got multiple times where people have to. We have to get through this canyon in two minutes and thirty seconds, or else. First off, here's the setup. We should we should talk about it if people haven't seen this movie yes. and you're just watching this for some reason <laughs> instead of watching the movie. I've, as a as a listener, I've done this before. I've done this, this with a this, lot of movies. the setup of this is they have to go through a trench that has a lot of it's a windy trench think trench run but if the trench run wasn't just a straight line think of it if it was like a windy canyon that you have to fly 100 feet off the ground with if you go above 100 feet there are missile turrets that will lock onto you in radar and shoot you down once you get over that you have to fly up the side of a mountain slash volcano or whatever the head is invert Go oh. back down the other way, flip the plane back in. This movie, guys. This, re- is, uh, this is like when <laughs> when you're not riding a movie anymore, you're level design. You're or you're like designing a roller coaster, and they make a great roller coaster. One pilot, the, the guy in the back has to, or I guess the guy in the front of the back, has to use the laser to get eye. And they keep saying dead eye, which is the coolest thing. We're like dead stick, dead eye. They can't figure out what's going on. So to lays the target so that one person can drop a bomb, blow a hole in it. Then the second group of people launches a missile into the hole and blows up the uranium d- the facility that's underground. That's going to be a national threat to everyone. Nick, then, Nick then just lays the target. Yeah, lays and the then, target. <laughs> of course, made so, popular by in the army now starring uh, Polly Shore, of course, and David Allen Gray. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic movie. Uh, sure? Then they have to pull nine G's to go up the side of the Canyon, which is enough to put your skull through the back of your head or whatever it is, uh, to which most people would just pass out. Uh, and then once they get over there, then the fun starts because then they are going to be on radar and the, the missiles are going to start shooting at you. And they have to do that cool thing where they, they, they put out the chaff, which is, you know, those the cool little flares. flares. Badass. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then once that happens, all in under two and a half minutes, because the fifth generation fighters will launch if the, the second they see anything below, the second they blow up the base, they're going to start launching fighters at them. Uh, or there's fighters in the area that are going to come over there and they have to, they're going to come kill them because they can't. The F 18s, the old 1970s, 80s F 18s are no match for fifth generation fighters. It's so, so fun. It's so cool. And I love the animations. Like, I love the way that they show how the canyon is. And it's like, if you get out of the canyon, yes. they, there's the Sams, they're going to get you. And I'm like, fuck, that is so cool yeah Sam, that's you know the, the other part for? of this like oh go ahead do you know what sam stands for uh fuck i, I knew it and now i don't surface to air missile surface yes yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's so that's tight it. yeah incredible matt what were you gonna say totally forgot fantastic oh. <laughs> it's, it's a really lit sequence right here right when he shows it all to him and then they go out for the big testing day and like now we get to see all the pilots and what do they really got right because we see the arrogant hangman who's like, yo, I'm riding like my life depends on it. Keep up. You know what I mean? And then yeah. I like the really powerful moments of when Coyote slows down, right? And then Phoenix has to adjust and fly out of there. He's like, why did you die? And he's like, not you. You. What are you going to tell his family, right? And mm-hmm. she, he's family. like, I don't know. And then the same, he goes to Phoenix, like, what are you going to tell his family? And he looks at Bob and it's like, oh, shit. He knows that because of Goose, you know? Mm-hmm. That shit's mm-hmm. tough. Uh, we do have a back and forth here about... about- with Maverick and, and Goose at some point where he's like, you you would know about losing your wing or, or you know, your co-pilot and stuff like that. He goes, well, if you fly long enough, that's, that's going to happen. He goes, you would know, uh, which is a good scene, I think. Uh, and then we have the scene where, where they were, they were practicing the last person to practice. I, I think it's payback. I'm not quite sure which, which of the pilots it was, uh, passes out and they have a name yeah, for yeah, it. They call like, it like, um, G-Lock. 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 Yeah. yeah. He passes out uh, because of the because of the and I love that the perspective shot where the world just goes yeah so dark for a second they uh, they do that so well and then I, the thing that I was gonna say before is like we talk about just the portrayal of like all the aerial footage is incredible but again like all the diagrams like all of the the digital representation of what's happening is also really cool and like aesthetically amazing and then this too with the the vignetting and it's closing in like through their vision is is so much fun. Well, they do a good job with it, too, because the vignetting only works because the amount of time we spend so close in on face shots where we see the cockpit, (laughs) we see the backgrounds around and like the difference between when they're blacking out versus you see like the canyon around. Yeah, you get to see how wide open it is. Yes. 
Um, and I love, by the way, that they have a meta commentary for like all that, all that stuff where he's like, Jesus Christ, this radar is so old. And you remember in the first <laughs> one, the way you saw all the planes coming toward each other was just blips on radar. Cause that's all they could yeah. do back then. And they have that moment where they kind of, it kind of looks like that. And then the mission control person comes over the comments like, all right, we're switching the satellite or whatever. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's like, it's like badass like 4k yeah. after effects mm-hmm. graphics as they're coming through. Super cool. Also just want to give a shout out before I forget with the fucking missiles they launched from the carrier that just nuke the, Oh uh, yeah. That was Jeez. Incredible. What a cool Jeez. shot. But um, then also, yeah, the really cool thing that they do here too, when payback is passed out and he's falling is uh Maverick does the missile lock. So it'll yeah. play the, the, beep, the beep, signal. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yes. To, the the tone. He's up. like, get that. Tone. Gotta get the tone. It's, uh, and thankfully, Payback pulls up, uh, wakes up and pulls out last minute before dying. Uh, but Cyclone's had enough. He's like, this is enough. This is, We're not doing this anymore. Now we're going in. We're going to do this way more straightforward. Uh, Mike. Well, this is the moment, actually, right after the G-lock, right? We feel that t- intensity of, oh, we're about to lose somebody. And then Maverick and Phoenix level out. And we get the kind of all the dust come up and it knocks out the Phoenix's birds. airplane right oh, there, right? right? That's and right. so that's the, the moment engine. where Phoenix and Bob have a moment where it's like, oh, they're going to die right now. Like, it's going down here. Oh, that's and right. she's trying to extinguish all of the all the jets on the back, and she's getting it up in the air, and he's yelling, you got to fucking eject out of punch that. Out, punch and out, they punch yeah. out, which was super badass. But that mm. was a really intense scene from going G-lock right there, about to lose payback into those two. Kept you on your toes for a couple of minutes. There. Dude, and honestly, think, uh, go for it, Andy. I was going to say, and I think it does a really good job of showing sort of plain technology <laughs> to a lot of people yeah. who... Like us, you know, like when she's extinguishing all these fires, like, oh, I hadn't even considered that to be a mechanic that these uh, jets would even have. So I thought that sequence did a really good job of showing Ooh. how or what sort of measures are are in place in case they fucking birds fly into the chain into the, <laughs> the engines, you know? Well, what's funny is the way they extinguish it is just by turning off. She just flicks a knob and one of the engines goes out. And then she tries to flick it back on. And it's always funny when I, whenever you see those little metal knobs that look like you buy them at a Radio Shack and you see that in like a $100 million plane, you're like, man, they're just like us. They're um, just like us. <laughs> I also, I, to, to uh, go off of what Mike was saying here, I think they did such a perfect job. And what makes this movie special is they, they know what they have and I think that they play with it so well in terms of new stuff versus legacy stuff, but the tension and excitement being the the through line. But the seeing the first movie, especially so recently, like the moment where Goose dies, it comes out of nowhere and it, it, it hits you so hard, but it feels real. All of a sudden it grounds this like larger than life kind of fantasy thing. And it's like, no, 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 this is, these are real people doing these things. And I think that having the back-to-back of him and g Lock combined with the bird scare and all that but then no one actually dying i think is such a great call like this movie had so much fun with being able to give us all those emotional feelings intense moments of like the almost deaths and there's many more to come but the fact that the the only deaths in this movie are not from people actually dying in the planes i thought was an inspired choice for this type Mm -hmm. of legacy sequel that could have so easily done the traditional and then maverick dies and mm-hmm. rooster dies like so many different things could have happened less and I, i'm so happy they did it this way instead uh uh we we land and cyclone's like listen this is just too crazy there's they, these we're gonna go way more straightforward with this maverick's like if you do that people are gonna die they're not coming back right and he goes the and and i have i love this back and forth where cyclone's like they're gonna get to the target and they're gonna destroy the target and maverick goes like and come home and return right? like, yeah. that's that yeah. should be a hundred percent part of what people need to do. And he's like, no, 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 no. And he goes, he's like, these, they have no confidence they can do this. Right. And so he goes over to Penny and he's like, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm, I'm losing confidence. And Penny's like, you know what to do. You got to, sh-. he's like, these, these pilots don't know this is possible yet. You got to show them it's possible. And so as they're being briefed, in the in like the comm set or whatever it is, they get what's up, Mike? Yeah, okay, you're missing a couple of yeah. pieces there, but okay. you are building up the hype because after Cyclone tells him, "Yo, you need to check yourself," he has the moment where he's like, "Man, I'm down," and you get this powerful fucking scene where you can feel it, right? Because we get it twice where Iceman texts mm-hmm. oh, Maverick right. and he I'm says, sorry, I forgot "Hey, him. what's up?" And he goes, who, "Not the time, bro." And that's he goes, who tells him. "You need to make them understand, right?" And like you see it, it just says ice across there. It's not initials; it's ice. That's so how cool. badass <laughs> this man is on a text message. In case bro. of emergency, <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> you get this buildup of like, "Oh shit!" Like this is insane, right? And so from there, then of course we have the bar scene where we're going to make everybody become friends and we're going to play football shirtless. Well, that's, that's, that's after this. 
So the first one is he goes to Ice and Ice is like yes. you got to show him right. Mm -hmm. And I and, and this and is and this is a Kilmer. great scene too. Yeah, shout out to Val oh, Kilmer's yeah, yeah, performance, yeah. but also like writing because like obviously the limitations of Val Kilmer not being able to speak and everything. I think they do it in a great way with you know him typing on the computer and again it's like they're writing the word choice. There's so many great moments oh. or I, there's a couple great moments where he doesn't have to retype anything. He, you know, he like points. Tom Cruise yeah. just does a great job and he like, just points oh, and he just says it again. Like, it's so oh, good. Yeah. Of course, the scene ends with him actually asking me, he's like, before you go, I got to know who's the better pilot. And Tom Cruise, great, great line. Over. He's like, We're having such a nice moment. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, let's not ruin this. Let's not ruin this. Uh, so flash forward, all the kids, they're giving him the new briefing and it comes over the loudspeaker. Hey, everyone, someone stole an F-18 and is doing this trench run right now. And Maverick just does it. And he show, he locks on, he drops the, the bombs, blows up the little crate target that they got there, we, pulls up and makes miss, it out of the crater. So at this point, we also have Iceman's funeral too. Yeah, that's so, he, he so gets Iceman dies, out he gets he kicked it. out, yeah, and that's why out. he he's like, I like I gotta show him. So I, I'm gonna show them and, and prove that this can be done, and hopefully that'll get me back as the teacher. And well, even the last thing, oh, hopefully it'll prove that and, it can be done yes. so they won't, you know, sacrifice some pilots for this. Oh. Uh, but of course, it backfires on him because he's like, hey, man, we're going. And guess what? You're actually flying now. You're the only person I know can actually do this. And you got to lead this team, which is probably mm -hmm. what we should have done. Begin with. And I was course, like, fuck, I just lied to Penny Benjamin. I told her I was not I was never going to do this again. And I got to go over and tell her what's up. And he does. And she gets dude. It. I love the lines, though, uh, with John Hamm, where he's just like, hey. Like either everyone dies or I'm putting my job on the line and like the whole it's a rhetorical question. Like it's just perfect, cheesy, corny <laughs> mm -hmm. build up to get us where we need to go. And I, and then we got there and it was good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Another banger from Warlock where he's like this Maverick. I believe That's the Admiral was was asking a rhetorical question. <laughs> Mike, this, what's up? This is when I talked with Andy last night about of like just how badass Tom Cruise is as an actor. Right. And like everybody in the comments will talk about Tom Cruise as a person some other day let's talk about him right. inside the goddamn fucking cockpit because andy brought up of like you just see it you can hear his grunts you can see him moving like this dude is the baddest bro like he does all these stunts and like puts his body on the line and like you're watching that trench run and this man is grunting he's working you can see the sweat on his face it's like this is some of the coolest stuff around nobody else is doing it like this guy yeah, th this whole trench run sequence, I think, is some of the most thrilling stuff I've ever seen in a movie theater. And it's it, it, we've seen it diagrammed. We 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 know kind of what he's doing and we know what the plan is. But like, I am so glad that I, you know, I'm so glad that I'm kind of just like a dumb little movie viewer where I just didn't expect this to happen. Mm -hmm. no. And when we keep when we keep on hearing people telling um tom cruise that you need to show them i didn't think he was going i don't think he meant by that i thought like get the team together show them that it's possible teach right. them but like i was not expecting tom cruise to suddenly you, you hear like that well is there's there's like a did you get clearance to be up there what the hell is going on and then that, that's when i knew like this movie is the greatest thing ever where he is pulling it off and and it's it's cheesy in moments where it's people in the classroom, like standing up, like everybody's doing the gamer lean, right? It's like, like it's like lean. Neo's fighting Morpheus. It's like yeah, everybody's it's like, yo, everybody's standing him. up and kind of like, holy shit, he's about to do this. And again, getting all those shots with Tom Cruise in the cockpit, hearing his efforts and his breaths and like <laughs> it's him doing all the turns and everything. Like, God damn, this is some of the best shit I've ever seen on screen. So this cool. this was the moment. So Kevin had seen the movie before I did. So he was watching it his second time on my first time. And this was the moment as he's doing this trench run that I looked over at him like, okay, this is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. And he looked at me, he goes, Tim, there's so much left. Just you and wait. When yeah. he said that, I I literally was thinking, I was like, all right, cool, there's more, but there's no way that they can like up it from how perfect this scene is. And they managed to. They really did. And uh, I gotta say, like that happens and they start gelling as a team and he's like i got one more day left or however many long we got before this operation happens we could either fly more planes or we could go play beach football which they call dog he, fight football dog fight yep. football Too we're often. playing Coolest offense thing. and defense at the same time just like a dog fight uh and, and everyone I'll, I'll just has to be shirtless yeah i'm so except, glad that except they, bob, bob which i love that detail yeah. so much it's 
It's the like all the different cuts of all of these beautiful people, glistening, sweaty, shirtless, playing, you know, dogfight football. And I think it's the very last shot of the montage as like Bob catching a pass with his shirt on. <laughs> Only one. Were they born, born in labs? Now it's time to ring those abs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ring Those Abs, a podcast within a podcast right now. The top ads we have on this list, abs, excuse me, Rick Rostovich coming in at number one as Slider. Tom Cruise, number two, Maverick from the first film, and Val Kilmer coming in at number three. Ladies and gentlemen. Andy Cortez, what do you got? Miles Teller looked unbelievable in this movie. Incredible. But oh, is so I'll be on. honest, I yeah. couldn't see, I didn't know whose abs were who, oh, okay? Yeah, like, it, it was just so fast to me, was I was so just glistening. seeing abs. I was like, I was like, oh, like, I, I was, was just trying to see the abs down. and <laughs> trying to understand, like, I hope they explain what the fuck they're doing with this game, because, like, I've never seen this. <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on on this beach with these two footballs it, going at the same time? <laughs> I'm so glad they had an explanation for it. Yes, so they'd be like, because I thought football. it was like, just like, thank a, Christ, this is something that, I, that doesn't exist already that I had no idea yeah. about. I'm so glad they explained it away. Yeah, yeah I'm glad they did incredible. too, because to me, it was just like an Abercrombie and Fitch commercial. It's just a bunch of beautiful, <laughs> hot people on the beach uh just glistening and i i was like yeah they don't know how to play football they're too beautiful to know yeah so, totally like, that makes sense to me I'm in gonna... my mind this is one of the greatest ab scenes in in history i i think that there are so many people with such amazing abs like the fact that like there's even a debate like I, miles teller looked so damn good incredible uh, hangman, hangman was hangman like looked oh, better. i think yeah. he might be the number one He's but like number one. overall i'm just saying they nailed it i think the scene was phenomenal was perfect the one thing that i don't even want to say is a criticism i feel like this is no where a, a kenny Loggins song mm-hmm. could have yeah, been yeah, incredible for sure. um, I, I like what they did i get that they were trying to be like look, look we're not just doing the exact same thing but I, it's one of those examples where i'm like well maybe you should have just yeah, done the exact it's, same it's, thing if you gave me the choice of doing that here or having goose play great balls of fire in the bar I would have ditched the great balls of fire scene. That didn't work for me very well. Oh, like, no, that was kind powerful. of strange. Uh, Andy. Andy Cortez. Yeah, I, I'm with Vic on that, but I'm glad it was a song like this. And I feel like any other movie, I feel like if Michael Bay were directing this, it would have been and it would have been a remix of uh, it would have been a Lincoln Park with the boys. It yeah, would, no, it would have been a Park remix with Khalifa. It would have been a remix with Flo Rida and Pitbull. Oh, nah. and oh like, no, don't give me that, Andy. I would have loved it, that so much. No, <laughs> it, would have, it would have been fucking terrible. It would have been a remix of Kenny Loggins with like some other modern artist, and it would have been like a, a faster beat or something like that. I'm so glad it wasn't anything like that. I'm glad You're it was telling just, me you don't want Kenny Loggins and Pitbull. <laughs> I do right not. No, I'm glad it was just something completely different. Yeah. Football um, was great. Music choice was bad. Football was a good choice. Yeah. Like the elevation. I would, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Glenn Powell is number one. Yeah. Me too. 100%. Because guy he was looked ripped. incredible. I'm going to go Glenn Powell. I'm going to, I'm going to say Slider ekes in at number two. And then we're going to put Miles Teller at number three. How I like that. that? Dude, yeah. I mean, tanned and toned, bro. Tanned and toned. I'm with that. Yeah. But like, how incredible is it that Miles Teller looks that good and he's number three? Like, we're just dealing with some abs on a whole Jesus new level. Y'all. And honestly, oh. like, if he would have had a signature pose, I feel like that could that would be enough. That would have bumped him above, but yeah. Oh, you know what, though? No, he had the I dance wanted, thing. He had, he had the, the dance, and it was incredible, dude. Okay. okay, it's going above Rick I think, I think, yeah, I blacked out at that point, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we all give some respect and put some respect on uh, Tom Cruise's name, though? I mean, yeah. he no. shot Top Gun number one at He was still wearing the jeans, old. too. Now right. the man is wearing jeans, no top, yeah. and he looks incredible. Like this dude. I'm gonna wow, actually say you, this. Brody. I'm gonna put top. I'm gonna put Tom Cruise from Maverick above Val Kilmer. Yeah, from Top Gun one. Lifetime Honestly, achievement award. I, I think that yeah, lifetime achievement award. He deserves it. Like the fact that Tom Cruise at whatever age he's at now can be mm-hmm. around those gentlemen shirtless, and they're all shirtless, and he didn't stand out. You know, that's crazy. Good for you. There is the part where like he gets tackled and I'm like, oh, no, (laughs) be careful. But I'm like, wait a second. That's Tom Cruise. (laughs) Love it. All right. Back. The man is 60. The the man's 60. Uh, So off we go. We've we've bonded as a team and it's time to pick the people that are going to be on this mission. And of course, he picks uh, Phoenix and Bob. He picks uh, Rooster and his Rio. And I forget what whoever who the other one. Rooster doesn't have a Rio. So the coolest part about this is Hangman. No Rio. 
fucking right. rooster, no real. You look oh, at right, those two and you're like, you guys are the fucking baddest, y'all. You know what I mean? Maverick, no real. Wild mm -hmm. stuff to see that. You know? Well, so I, I still would have loved. Oh, go ahead. Was the idea there that the, it was depending on what their jobs are? Like yeah, I saw so you only had a Rio had a for Rio. the laser yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, but every other team had duos, which was weird. No, every it's not true. Duo there had no. had. Duos. It was it was. So I'm looking it up right now. It was the F A F slash A eighteen E and F, and I think the E has no pi no co pilot, and the F has a co pilot for navigation. And each team had two of each one of the planes. So I had the the guy that was going to shoot the missile, and then the team that was going to laser the target. I believe. I just I meant during, like, the training sequences. We didn't see anybody flying alone besides those. Oh, like, fair. In the beginning of the movie, everybody was paired up. Nobody else was solo like those. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Very cool. Uh, uh, of I would have loved here, like, uh, when they're picking, you know, the pilots, they just pick, like, one background pilot. Like, yeah, this guy's really good. Halo, yeah. you're in. Halo, yeah. you're yeah. in. Halo, Halo yeah. Halo's been Chris. killing it. Halo did it in two Let's minutes. Go. First try. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, off we go. We get a wonderful moment here. Where uh, where uh, Rooster and Maverick are on the flight deck. Well, first off, we get fucking just absolute, completely makes no sense. But I don't give a shit. Shot of the fucking planes on the elevator coming down, oh, wow. and Maverick walks over to the like. He's like Maverick, good luck or whatever. And he's Maverick like, you belong just, here. Yeah, yeah, you're where you he belong. Just, that's what it was. And he just ascends up to the flight deck, which is incredible. Uh, great, great moment here where he's like, he's like, uh, he calls him by his first name. He's like, Bradley, you can do this. And Bradley's like, shit, because he's kind of freaking out. Like, why, why, did, why would you not pick Hangman? Of course, Hangman has to hang back, no pun intended, uh, just in case they need to send more people out there. Uh, and off we go. Maverick gets in his plane, and we get the best shot in the whole movie where he launches himself from the, from the flight deck of the carrier into the sky, all in one shot. It's so worth cool. seeing this movie and spending the money for just this one shot. And you, yeah, you can watch in the trailers because it's in the trailers. But dude, when you're when it's on the big screen and you've hyped this much, it's so incredible. And of course, as they're going toward it, they switch to the cool satellite view. We see modern day technology, and they launch a bunch of missiles at uh, into the air to bomb the uh, the runway of the enemy runway. What's up? And if you remember Everybody. years ago. We were talking about Top Gun Maverick on a kind of funny morning show, and you asked me to go report live from Lake Tahoe's mini airport. That is our airport. That that was really? bombed right there, and all the smoke and them running around at the end. That was right there in Tahoe, which was oh, badass. that's so you can see Mike in the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so, that's that so awesome! This, this shit was so sick, and Nick, you nailed it. Like this scene is just it. They have spent the last whatever hour and a half earning our trust that we can trust them with hype and that we can trust them with just making us feel like we are part of this journey. We're in it with the team. But when Tom Cruise takes off and they're all taken off with him and then they launch these missiles, it was like one of the moments where I'm like, yo, this movie didn't need to be cooler. Like mm -hmm. those missiles it up to this not. ante where I'm like, oh, so this, cool. I said this earlier that I think this movie is going to ruin a lot of other things for me. Like a Metal Gear Solid movie can never be this good. It just can't. They just fucking nailed it here in every way possible. I I can't believe how cool the missiles were in this scene. It's when so they good. called them Dagger 1, 2, 3, and 4, yeah, and they're like yeah. daggers into formation before the canyon, and they get on top of one another stacked but in the line with some of the coolest cinematography around, bro. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. What did they call the carrier to? What was the base called? Because hmm. before it was, uh, I forget what it was in the first one. It was super cool because they were Ghost Rider and base was like. Yeah. Something else. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Someone will leave it in the comments. But anyway, the we Enterprise? start the trench. What's that? Are you talking about the Enterprise? Yeah. What was, what, what was their call sign? Oh, I don't know. Because the Enterprise called them Dagger 1, Dagger 2. Originally, like, I forget what it was in the first movie. But when he calls back to them, he's like negative so-and-so. Like, oh, he, they have a call mm -hmm. sign, too. I forget what it was. Another badass moment is we were building up to that, right? Is all the daggers go off, and then it shoots up to the UAV plane up above. And they're like, Dagger, you're clear on UAV. And then they yeah. drop below the clouds, and they're like, you're off UAV. And you get this, like, stunning moment of Maverick looking at the team and then Rooster looking off into the fog on the seaside. And you're like, man, some ominous is out there, right? And they're like, you're off UAV. Dagger, yes, you call. Him. And he goes, we're doing this. And they just fucking gun it. It was so badass. Because oh, I, that's I, incredible. I, I think, yeah, th that moment of look, looking off into the fog and understanding they aren't in the desert simulating this anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are real mountains. This is a different climate, a different environment. Who knows what the elevation is doing here in addition to all the G's you're about to pull. Like, this shit is real right now. And 
there's no looking back. Like we're here, we're gonna fucking do this, and it just fucking goes off with a bang, man. I, f- I forgot to mention they redo the shot uh, before he launches the iconic shot of Maverick doing the salute first and then the, the let's fucking go yeah. to the flight deck. And the guy's like, yeah, let's do this. So cool. He's like, bah, bah. anyway, we not got enough a- thumbs up. Lo- no, there was so, so many up. thumbs up. So dude. Many- <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody's thumbs up. And bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, we go on the trench run and it starts off and, and it's scary as shit because they're looking up and they can see the surface to air missile turrets that are above them. Uh, they start banking and they're going fast. And of course, rooster starts falling behind. We did get a couple moments there where I forgot to mention. I did not necessarily like the fact that they put talk to me goose in there a couple times and i especially didn't i thought it was a little cringy it was like talk to me dad to try I to like figure out that. That. i love that i like that love perfect that, 10 yeah, out of 10 that, didn't work for me. Yeah, like, like I, the first talk to me goose i thought was good the second one i was like we're, we're doing this again because tom cruise has like five catchphrases that they feel the need to say like eight times throughout this movie they yeah. didn't second say they talk had to me goose speed by the way yeah. i know it was, a little well, disappointing, but yeah, the talk to me speed. dad got me. The talk yeah. to me dad got talk me. Talk to me dad, and that's when Tom Cruise whispers, fucking do it, kid. You know just what I mean? And then thinking, he guns it, it, you know? And they end up, you'll have a great moment. When they go, Rooster's dis- disengaging, and then right, we have the moment where he goes, not the moment where, oh my God, he's re-engaging. We didn't yeah. have that. They were just like, <laughs> we did. Yeah. And we, we just have it for it. She well, no, but they didn't make it. No, but there wasn't a guy like, Rooster's re-engaging. Yeah. Like, oh, sweet. Yeah. We start the run, of course, and Maverick's ship and his and his co-pilots would do it perfectly. He blows a hole in the ground, but we get a dead eye in in Rooster and his and his co-pilot's ship. Uh, and they can't laze the target, and he's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna drop it." And the guy's like, "No, man, I got this." And the eye's going all over the place for the thing. And he's like, "Don't, I got to do this blind." And he just takes the shot, and boom, it goes right through. And the effect here of the explosion and the ground going up first and then imploding is oh so God. incredibly so cool. cool. Uh, and they pull out, and they both make it out of the canyon with like nine and a half or ten G's pulling on him. Mavic starts to pass out for a second, but thank God he doesn't because as he does, man, those Sam turrets come to life fast. And they start shrouping missiles out into the ground, just just shooting Shrouping. missiles left and right. Uh, yeah. After a while, Shrouping. dude, I've just had chills for the last yeah. like twenty seconds oh. just of Nick explaining this. this my, I, I had goosebumps, and now my goosebumps yeah. are rooster bumps. All right, come wow. on. Now, Nick, when we talk about some of the top scenes in the movie, when Miles Teller and his squad get out, and we get the zoom out of the top of the peak with all four fighter jets zooming in and out of these sand missiles, so cool. Easily one of the top moments in the movie it's like oh wow this is incredible and they're zooming flying they're talking to each other we know that the two fifth gen uh pilots are on the way too right, so like to we got big moments coming up but like that zoom out and seeing the peak and all that beautiful I, yeah. and, and also, also to like to this out, point go ahead i wanted to call it just like miracle one yeah. miracle two oh, and yeah. that's like that like you know that just because those things are out and the explosion happened out, it's cool. We're not anywhere close to being clear. And I just had flashbacks with all the flares going out to Mike in the helicopter in war zone. And I just like, man, I have the need for speed right now. I yeah, just you believe, it, believe in me. Believe in me. <laughs> when I'd be in that helicopter, Nick, and I'd be looking at him like, hold fucking tight, bro. Yeah. We're doing it. And he's like, oh, Mike, hit the flares, Goose. It. And I'm fucking punching the flares. <laughs> <laughs> out. Come on, it's people. Incredible, dude. I love uh, it. At this point, it. too, like, it's incredible. And I got to call out the, the sound design because they drop the music <laughs> out. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. just have the sounds the whole time. And it, like, it just fills you with so much just like anxiety and anticipation. Yeah, I was the whole moment. I was telling um when we walked out of the theater Nick, I was telling uh D that it reminded me of like how to, when I was that tense, it reminds me of when I go to bed and I listen to like my meditative sort of like audio stuff and the and I think I'm relaxed, but then the lady's like, "Now relax your neck." I was like, "Oh, you know what? I wasn't relaxing my neck." <laughs> the in the movie, I'm just like sitting in the most tense position and i was like dude i gotta chill like i feel like every muscle in my body is just contracted right now yep. and i need to just relax because right now i am so on edge this is incredible ah mike i just go up this is in the in the wikipedia they don't call them rios they call them wso's or wizos okay which stands for weapons systems officer that's so what I, bob was that's yeah, what bob that's was yeah so when bob he introduced was bob he's like i'm a weapon system operator and he goes yeah uh, he's not a jokester not a jokester yeah. he says. 
Uh, so that's why they don't call them the Rios, I guess, in this. Because I think Rios Radar or something operator or like whatever yeah. it is. Uh, I digress. Copy, copy the pairs, by the way, I want to point this out. This actually was in here. was Phoenix and Bob, uh, Rooster, and then Payback and Fanboy and uh, Maverick. Those are, those are the, the two pairs. Or, yeah, the two pairs. Anyway, we pull out. Everyone's popping freaking flares left and right. The sound of the flares, to, to back up what you guys are saying about the sound design, the things that stick out in my brain are the, the sounds of the flares, the sounds of the stick, as and, and the, the the sort of ricketiness of the metal hitting against mm -hmm. itself as we're going mm -hmm. through the canyon. And then, of course, just the explosions. All This, this whole sequence is unbelievable. And, of course, uh, 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 they get a missile lock on Rooster. Rooster's out of flares. Maverick oh. has to sacrifice his body for this. Hits the brakes. Rooster flies right by him. I don't know if you guys caught that, but that's what he did. Hits the brakes and then just throws out all of it. Just sprays flares all over Rooster's ass to get this missile off of him. But it lights up Maverick instead. Uh, and Maverick goes down. And we don't know if he has survived or not. I and sat like, up in my fucking chair. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, this, this is the type of shit that I love. And I know Tim said that he is worried that this will ruin any sort of Star Wars dogfight stuff. But like... I feel like the Star Wars dark fight stuff was like probably the stuff that I enjoyed the most in uh, like Last Jedi and in well, really in any of the Star Wars movies. But maneuvers like that are the coolest shit that you can put on screen for me. And when that shit happened, like I sat the fuck up and I just almost wanted to be like, holy yeah. shit. Like, oh, yeah, holy yeah. <laughs> so cool. And honestly, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, oh, keep going, Nick. I'll, I'll do it afterward. I was going to say the movie could have ended right here. And mm -hmm. I would have been like, that was That's awesome. So that's that what I was awesome. going to say to you, Nick. But it did it. You get that tense scene of we go back to base, and he's like, "You tell all of them to get home right yeah, now, right?" Not. And Goose is like, "Roost is like, I got to go back." And then you have the shot of Phoenix going, "He's gone, man." And then Bob says, "Yo, he's dead. We can't go back." And then it fades to black, and you're like, "That could be the end of the movie, right? right. Fucking there. That could be the end of it. Not the end. It's not. It's not the end because." Oh, and by the way, I, I like I like John Hamm's performance here too, where he's like, "Bring them all back," but it's not because of ego. He literally says, "We're not losing another pilot today. We're just not doing it." Yeah, uh, and you can't argue with that, right? He's right. It was the right call. Of course, it goes to black. We're not done yet, ladies and gentlemen, because mm -hmm. it opens back up on a snowy tundra. Maverick has landed safely. Is trying to disengage all the crap from him to get his uh, the radar thing that's off of him. As an attack helicopter comes Dude, around, a him. hind D, man. So this is D, the most bro. Metal Gear Solid one thing ever. It looks like they're on Shadow Moses. Like this shit was fucking crazy. And when we first watched the movie, it was in 4DX. And Andy Cortez, I know your feelings and all this, but at any point, if you're like Tim, we're doing it. I'm in. I'll buy your ticket. We're going to watch wow. this movie together. I need to see this again in 40X. But this moment, me and Kevin have seen multiple movies in 40X uh, at this point. And uh, it's always a blast. It's always stupid fun. We had never gotten the snow effect until this. And all of a sudden, snow just gets pumped I into the theater. It. And it was like, it was magic, awesome. you guys. I it was it. Disneyland shit. This but it was Tom so Cruise alone. And I love that they they. We're like, is he dead? Like, we see his shit get blown up. Like, holy fuck, are they doing this? It cuts to black, but immediately it cuts to no, he's alive. But wait, he's a man against a helicopter. <laughs> And of course, the helicopter squares off. I was about to go for the killing shot, and a missile hits it. Rooster has returned, uh, but Rooster, unfortunately, uh, with those those fifth gen fighters show up, and one of them ices him. Maverick sees him pop his chute, runs over to him, and is just mad at him. He's like, "What the hell are you doing here? You should Great be back scene. on the car carrier." And he goes, and "He goes, you told me not to think." And he just said, "What were you like, thinking? He's like, you, told you, think? you told me think? not to. <laughs> He's like, Dude, the way they shoot this is yeah. so good because, like, yeah, that's dumbass dialogue, perfect dumbass dialogue. But mm -hmm. the way that it, like, they sit on it for a second, and Miles Teller just goes, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. he just does this motion that's this, like, uh, I listen to you.' This is the moment you. where, like, right. Miles Teller like gets to be the most Miles Teller, yes. and it works. It, it works. Does definitely work. Of course, this yeah, is a Mike. cool scene because they're." They're on their feet. They're not in a jet plane. Yes. We don't get that in Top Gun. We don't at get all. that in now, Top Gun. Now you have this moment of like, oh shit, we're in the middle of unknown country in the middle of a snowy tundra. What the fuck are they gonna do yeah. right now on their feet? And, this was so cool, bro. And you, feel, it. you feel a little I scared for them too. Like yeah. they're they're not in their planes. They're the best. They're the best pilots in the world. But what, are they the best hi hiding it <laughs> from people? Skiers, and, no, I leaned not. over to I leaned over to Tim and I was like. When him and Miles Teller are looking at the Jets, like I just wanted Tom Cruise to look over to Miles and be like, I have something to tell you. My real name is Ethan Hunt. <laughs> that <was> mission Impossible. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it is very Mission Impossible. I love it. Uh, to me, I think this is, I'm like, this movie just became a completely different movie. It reminds me a lot of Behind Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson. Remember that where he gets shot down? And that was the name of the movie. 
Which one am I thinking of? Yeah, you're oh, thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, anyway. Oh, Wilson's the one in that? I think he's the one where he plays a pilot and he gets shot down and yeah. has to, like, he has to, like, hike his way out. Oh, Black Hawk Down. No, that's a different movie. Oh, Behind Enemy Lines. In. Black Hawk <laughs> Down with Owen Wilson. Black Hawk Down. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was with Josh Hartnett and Ewan McGregor, of all people. Uh, 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 real quick, I didn't get to experience the 40X experience. I don't know if they have one of those in Atlanta. I need to look into it. So instead, I just had Gino shake my chair, and he threw little pieces yes. of popcorn Good. in the air for the snow. That sounds right. Good. Sounds so right. I, I feel like it's probably similar. Probably similar. We, uh, <laughs> we head over to uh, Tahoe Airport, uh, which is great that it's that. And uh, Maverick's got a plan. He's like, look, you see what that is right there? That, and by the way, they set this up original. I don't know if you guys caught this line, but they're like, yes, this base is full of, of fifth gen badass fighters and a couple F-14s for no reason. And of course, fuck yeah, there's a reason behind it. Because uh, Tom Cruise is like, we're going to steal that right there. And there's one lone F-14 still in place. Of there is. And he's like, dude, how old is that? And he's like, oh, man, it's older than Nick or as old as Nick. We don't dude, know. real talk, like, this is this is something that shouldn't work. And I feel like oftentimes in these legacy sequels, it's like, of course, they got to go back. Like in Jurassic World, they got to go back to exactly where the first park was. And we all want that stuff, but they, they need to do it right or else it's, it's just like, ugh, this yes, is eye rolly. I legitimately, I've watched, again, so many movies with you guys, and me and Andy have a bond when it comes to hype moments. We have an understanding of like, yo, this is fucking hype. Let's fucking go. Every once in a while, I'll get maybe like a look over from Nick, uh, mostly for comedic things, but every once in a while, it's like, uh, is this really fucking happening? Look, I've never... I've known Nick over a decade at this point. I have never seen Nick Scarpino as giddy and excited as when the F-14 shows up. And, like, he looked at me, and it, he was like a fucking little kid. But he's was, just like, oh, my God, it's an yeah. F-14, Tim. <laughs> like, yeah, what it is, Nick. <laughs> and, and it's because they earn every single, like, fucking piece of this moment. Like, giving us so many, like, just this incredible new and fresh and unique and beautifully shot and riveting sequence that they just went through. And then having them on the ground. Then they're like, now we're going to bring in the F-14. It was, oh, but my God, Tim. Not, I want you guys to realize it's not just the, the significance of the F-14, which was the original plane they flew in, in the first Top Gun. It's the fact that it's Maverick and Goose's son as his co-pilot yes. in yeah. F-14 that mm -hmm. starts to really set in when he's, like, doing all the stuff and, like, they're prepping it. And he jumps up on the tail wing, runs across the thing, and jumps in. And then he goes, cockpit clear, cockpit clear. And the cockpit comes down and locks into place. I'm like... And he looks like him, too, because he's got the little yes. butt. It's unbelievable. Such a cool moment. You're absolutely right. It shouldn't work. Do we want to stop and think about how long it would have taken them to run from where they crashed to this airfield that was probably 40 miles away? Don't worry about it, guys. It's but Tom Cruise. He can run. Oh, so yeah. Yo, so get we got Tom all. Cruise running in this movie. Yeah, I did yeah. not expect it. It was magical. But when the both of them were walking, they're like, hey, we should speed up. Yeah, there's two guys that's over there. So yeah, good. there's more yeah. guys over there. It's so fucking yeah, good. That's funny. And uh, then and then when they when they get into the air that we're about to see with the, the guys over the comms, and then we get oh, our first thumbs like, down. So he's like, what is it? What does that mean? I have no idea. I don't know yeah. what that sign is. What about that one? No idea. I haven't seen that one either. <laughs> get the uh, next ball back when they get up in the air and he goes, Rooster's Rooster sign is now on. And he's like, What? And he's yes. like, He's flying. And he goes, He's supersonic. And it's like, <laughs> Oh, he's fucking oh, supersonic. Yeah, <laughs> uh, love the uh, love the idea of like he looks at the radar. He's like, Jesus Christ, this thing is really old. And one of the fuses is out. He goes, What which fuse is? And he goes, I don't know. That was your dad's department. He looks down, it was like 400 fuses from playing yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Which is crazy. So he's like, don't worry, I'll find one. Uh, I love all that. Love love him pulling the pins on the missiles, too. I just thought was, those were cool shots. Yeah. Just seeing the prep that has to go into this. Awesome. They take off. And, of course, they immediately get assaulted by the uh, the fifth gen fighters. Uh, if memory serves correctly. Uh, Maverick manages to outpilot these guys. Or, yeah, they're flying next to him. He goes, what are you going to do? He goes, I don't know. I got to make a choice. He's like, don't think. Just do it. He goes, he's like, what would you do? He's like, I wouldn't think. I would just do it right or something like that. And then he just banks. The plane oh, yes. right and shreds the so first cool. one with the guns first. And then they dogfight with the second one. He gets the better of him. I forget how he beats the second Oh, my God. Really my quick. God. Okay, two two things on this one. First one was Miles Teller and him having the back and forth of, you got to pilot this thing. What would yep. you do if I wasn't here? And he's like, you are here, right? And you know that moment yeah. of like, I can't lose number two here. That would be awful. And then the next scene when after he kills the first one, him and this other dude get in the dogfight, right? Yes. And this motherfucking thing flies in front of him because he does the move and then stops on a dime is spinning sideways and they fly past him and miles goes what the holy fuck was he that? Is, he goes, holy <laughs> shit what the fuck spinning and turns back on him was so cool bro. easily Which my is... my favorite part of the movie and it, it's like i don't know why why i didn't think of this i i think i was telling tim before the movie like i don't know 
what it is about Top Gun that could be like improved to make the movie as good as like the hype. But things like this, like having an enemy pilot that's like in their league, like I didn't even think of it seems so simple, what? but I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And when he what? pulls this move off, I'm like, oh, this shit is on. And this but is it, like when I wish and obviously we can't because this is unnamed country X where we could like see an actual villain. Because mm -hmm. like even though it's just it's always the same generic uh, pilot in like the black the helmet. blacked out suit. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, this dude's fucking cool. Oh, like, I, there's a whole backstory in my head yeah. for this yeah. pilot. 100%. He's top gun of whatever this made up country is. And he is just he's he's on it. He's just on it. Fun. Super cool. I do want to point out one thing that for me that I'm sure was not something they intended to do, but something that I absolutely adore and love was that the uh, at one point, one of the planes that Maverick flies has the rudders are painted black and it looks a lot like uh, Rick Foker's VF1 J VF1 S from uh, Robotech, which is badass. And that was one of the things that Andy's point earlier was he's like, I wish they painted the planes differently. That's what I loved about Robotech was you could tell who's who was in what plane based on the color and their colors were always like their call signs as well. So like, I think he was in one of them was like Vermilion group. One of them was skull squadron. One of the, you know, it was always super cool and very, very anime of course. Um, uh, but they kill the last guy, the third guy. They're like, Oh, oh. there's a guy coming in on radar. We don't know where he's at. We're out of missiles. All we've got is, uh, uh actually no, that's out, out of everything. So they kill the, the second guy on the yeah. final machine gun burst. Cause it goes, 250, 180, 160, right? And you see it counting 33. down. He has yes. 33 bullets 33. Left, And he's like, do it, Maverick, right? And the thing's fucking moving in the canyon. And he just gets it perfectly and then sets up the great shot of, oh, where is this guy? Because they get the beepers going off, right? And he looks in front of him and he's like, he's on our nose. And he tries to hit it. And it's like, we don't have anything, <laughs> bro. Yeah. You hear no, just a no de 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 yeah. emptiness. Oh. oh, so sad. And then, of course, the guy gets a, the guy gets a lock on him. And he's like, we got, we're going to have to, you got to bail out. And he's pulling the thing. And of course he, he has that one moment, that wonderful moment where he's like, he doesn't want to tell him to bail out because he doesn't want the same thing to happen yep. to goose to happen to rooster. And he's like, fuck it. You got to just do it. We're going to go high. You got to bail out. And rooster's pulling and He's like, it's not working. It's not working. And he just goes, I'm sorry. As he's, as the plane, oh. as you see his plane going up and the guy's about to hit, just about to pull the trigger on that. Oh, missile. the missile comes out. Oh, the missile it goes does, out. Yeah. out. Yeah. And as it goes out. Hangman's missile hits oh! the fifth gen and blows Oh my up. god! <laughs> it was so good. Oh and my. you knew it was coming because yeah. they cut back and forth to Hangman waiting mm -hmm. in the back I love the deck. We get you like the great scene too, where like that's again when when Rooster flips the switch and they know that he's airborne. He's like, "Send me." He he goes in on the comms like permission to you know launch spare dagger or whatever, and they're like, "No, like stay." Like we don't know what's what's going on out there. And it's, oh, you know, he's coming, but he just, he just delivers. Oh, I, so, yeah, I, don't, man. I don't know that I've ever had a theater experience as rowdy as this moment for the oh. first time when I watched it, where besides Marvel movies, like Marvel movies, it's like, cool, right. 23 fucking movies that built to this moment. We're all expecting it. When he says the thing, we all cheer because it right. happened with this though. It, they just fucking heard it in this movie that this ridiculous ass moment. Cause like when you think about it, when you really break down the fact that in the last 30 minutes, we had already seen Maverick save goose. Then we see goose save Maverick. And now it's hangman <laughs> saving both of them. It's just like the overwhelming amounts of like, but they can't, they're, they no, they're going to do, Oh my God, they did it. <laughs> it's uh, the, literally the, the whole theater erupted, so like good. just cheering for hangman. Uh, and and it's, it's perfectly just sort of laid out as well. Again, Nick yeah. mentioned with all the times they cut back to Hangman wanting to. I mean, there's nothing I love more than when a shitty asshole villain. Yes. Um, is 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 kind of like supportive of the cause. Mm -hmm. And before Miles goes out there, he's like, go give him hell. Like, hell, you know, yeah. go fuck him up, you know. And then we see Hangman wanting to get in there. He's the star fucking point guard sitting on the bench yeah. to be like, coach, put me in. I know I can help this squad. And oh, my God, it's just so good. And then they're like, man, you look good or whatever the fuck. He's like, oh, I he am goes, good. I'm you look good. good. I am yeah. good. I'm always good. Bro. God like, damn. Fuck you are, dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, of course, Maverick had a slight problem when he was uh, leaving the airport. His front landing gear got uh, dislocated from the plane. So he radios in. And they're like, no problem. We got a giant net that will catch you. Yeah, and I'm like, bring oh up the gate. Yeah, this so is cool. insane. Uh, so the plane crashes and they're okay. And then oh, hold up, Nick. Oh, yeah. Hold Missed up. the iconic moments. 
Did I? He goes, bring up the barricade, and they fly by, and what the fuck oh, does he do? He buzzes, buzzes the, tower. the tower, bro, because you know he's got to do it, Just man. Just to be a dick, he buzzes the tower. That's right. Uh, they land, and of course, the, for whatever reason, they, they just I guess they just have a photographer on deck all the time because it's all these wonderful photo moments. We get a redo of of uh Iceman and Maverick. We got Hangman and Bradley or and, and Rooster uh it's saying everything's gonna be okay. And uh everything in fact is okay. What's up? Yeah, the cool one was Phoenix coming over, right? And we knew from the bar scene Hangman was the only one out of this Top Gun group that had a confirmed kill on a real plane, right? And they teased him about it. And then she comes up, she goes you got number two. And he goes, yeah, I got number two. And she goes, but Mav got two more. He's got five. That's an, an ace. He's an ace. Oh, Ooh. that shit's so badass, bro. <laughs> this scene Come was beautiful, on, man. And I was saying this earlier, but I, I love that no one died. Like, we get the mm -hmm. whole crew able to celebrate with each other on this thing. And it's just, like, such a win. And I'm, like, I'm looking around at Andy and Nick. I'm like, we did it, guys. Like, we fucking did it, you know? <laughs> we did it, y'all. You're, you're just like them celebrating. Yeah. yeah. We're all the same. Just like, so uh, cool. yeah, Nick's eating the popcorn that I gave him. I'm eating my Skittles. <laughs> it's so good. Nick, uh, how'd you like the, pip the pickle sauce, by the way? It was good, really, really good. Really good. Oh, really, really good. Yeah, I've come around on that for sure. Yeah. Uh, Maverick, of course, heads back to the flight deck, and uh, Jennifer Connelly's character Peggy Benjamin nowhere to be found. And he's like, "Oh no, I'll never it's see Penny. her again." <laughs> Penny. That was that moment. Right? That was that moment Penny, of the Penny. back and forth of like, "Don't leave me again," right? And he's like, "I'm not going to leave." And then he leaves, and I love that moment of like, "Oh, she went on a sailing trip," and you think to yourself like, "Oh shit, did he just lose her? Like, is she gone?" Forever, bro. Like I liked, I liked this back and forth. I liked it a lot. Right, and then I we get didn't a... because we just had like the great moment with Miles Teller, and then it, it mm. felt like we're like that was the climax, and you're just giving me like this little extra side story well, here. We had end. to work to Lady Gaga's incredible song, okay? Because then we end it with Miles Teller and freaking Maverick working on the plane. And he looks mm. through and he goes, "Is that the little daughter?" And she's sitting there in front of the hottest fucking Porsche. Carrera you've ever Bad. seen in your oh, life, bro, God. right? And then they get in their little two-seater plane, and Lady Gaga says, don't worry, I got the fucking anthem for the summer, and boom! That's how that goes, dude. So dude. good. And then we get, like Nick was saying, the credits where it says everyone's fucking call sign, their actor name, all this oh. shit, and just boom, we get the, the cheesy footage of them from the movie. Always a sucker for it. And by the time it ends, we don't get a post-credit scene. We don't get none of that. They're just like, <laughs> hey, you guys, you're welcome for what yeah. you just saw. Here's yeah. one last thing. The, as you're leaving the theater, let's hear the Top Gun anthem one more fucking time, okay? Let's get fucking hyped. Here's the gong. Let's go. <laughs> God, it's so good. And that oh, so good. is Top Gun Maverick. Andy, hit me with haiku and review. You're, I, you know I will, Tim. <laughs> yep. yep. You, you had it a second ago. Ways. You yeah. did. I had it a second ago. Seven syllables in the middle. Yes. <laughs> Five for the first and last line. Yes, if it's not poetic, no need to fret. And haikus don't need to rhyme. Need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can write your review in haiku form just like Andrew Feisner did by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Andrew says, really tough mission. Will be no deaths on his watch. Saving all the boys. Uh, Ignacio Rojas says, lots of great action. Somehow beat expectations. Tom Cruise is big boss. <laughs> Jason says, stop awesome. thinking, just act. Fifth generation, who cares? Everyone comes home. Joe Merton says, try to change my mind. Bob is the greatest call sign. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll wait. There you go. Let's do a <laughs> little awesome. uh, ragu bagu. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Guys Talk Bad Guys here for Top Gun in review. Right now on the list, we have Iceman. Where do we want to put, I guess Hangman is the is the bad guy in this. I'll, I'll put Hangman and maybe Cyclone, because Cyclone's kind of an antagonist. Yeah, that's world. what I was going to say. Okay, this okay. one's complicated again, because we have the birds. We have Maverick still, still <laughs> conflicting with himself. Maverick and Rooster having their own conflict. And then Maverick and Cyclone. And then <laughs> Hangman and Rooster and Hangman and everybody. But then also the villains, the, the bad guys, the unnamed bad guys. Five Gs, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all, it, it's number fucking one. Like, Iceman's cool. I fucking love him as an idea, and I think that this movie does him even better, right? Like, this this is perfect where it makes the 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 mythos of the first movie 
stronger uh but i think that all the elements of this are great and the fact that hangman is the bad guy but by the time the movie ends we are fucking right there with we him and cheering him. for him more yeah. than anything i i love it dude i'll put him in number one i, I, I like hangman a lot in this one i, I do like the back it's, and forth i don't think it was as strong as maverick and iceman right because we had that iconic scene inside the locker room where he's like you're dangerous and then he chomps at him you know inside yeah. there no but no nobody's chomping but Hangman really did push Rooster, right? Like, it was really cool to set the tone of, like, Hangman is the baddest, but we know who Rooster is. He's a team player. He's there to protect his squad. Like, that first scene when they're in the teamwork and Rooster dies for his other ones, mm -hmm. Phoenix comes up and goes, now you know what the fuck Rooster's all about, right? Like, he's there to keep everybody alive. And I like that Hangman pokes and prods him to say, you got to do better. You got to be better. And that was mm -hmm. Iceman and Maverick back in the day, just yeah. a little bit different. And I loved I loved what this guy did as Hangman. It was really, really solid. The the one thing I will say, and and I'm, you're you're all right. You're all right. Yeah. But nobody, nobody is as fucking cool as Val Kilmer as Iceman. He just wasn't. And every time he said anything, when I was a kid, I remember watching that movie, going, "How come this movie's not about Iceman? He's so cool." <laughs> also, just putting it out there again, Hangman is a dick. He's not wrong, but he's a dick kind of because he gets off on it. Iceman was a dick because he was right. That's yeah. like someone doing something really, really dangerous in front of you. And you're like, I'm going to call this guy out on it every single time. He's not wrong. Also, just throwing it out there again. Iceman was number one. Actually, did graduate number one. Putting it out there. Well, He's nobody graduated because these where guys it's were really already cool. Top Gun graduates. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had all graduated Top Gun. They came back. So there was no class here for this. I, here's the thing. Iceman, like, Hangman brought up... Uh, fucking uh, Rooster's dad dying. Yeah, I think that yeah, alone makes him move. like a worse person oh, and more yeah, of an asshole. So okay, all right, we'll, we'll it, leave that. Again, like this, where it's really cool where they they flip it, where he is he is the asshole Maverick. Like he's the one who leaves his wingman. He's the one who flies crazy and reckless. He's got the Maverick ego, but like oh. the the coldness of Iceman too. He's a, just a perfect oh, combination. That all right, we'll put. Back? It was so good when they did the first fighter team and Hangman leaves his teammate and Maverick yes. literally word for word goes, leaving your leaving your wingman. Haven't seen that in a while. And you're like, oh, shit, bro. He's been there before. Ice is a mountain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll put Hangman at number one. Iceman a very close second on the Ragu Bagu list. And that's going to round out the Top Gun Ragu Bagu list for now, because I have a feeling we're going to get a third Top Gun. Eventually. No, no, I hope think so? oh, come on. No bro. way. No way. You got all these great characters. You're not going to bring them back for another Top Gun, Top Gun 3, Topper Gun. I, Top I, Gun? I can't even this, imagine, this, man. This movie is so good. I, I walked out of thinking it, Nick. I was like, could we do another one? There's no way. There's no way you could do another one. This one was too good. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll have to wait and uh, see. Hey, listen, I didn't. I never thought they'd do a sequel to Top Gun, and I waited forty freaking or thirty years for that. So we'll see what happens. Let we'll alone one this good. Uh, but before we rank them, we do need to do Ragu Goo Goo, Ragu Goo, -goo. Uh, which oh, is ranking yeah. ranking the goose related characters. Uh, currently, number one, we have Goose. Uh, what What do we think about Rooster? I love Rooster. But nothing, nothing's going to top how cool Goose was. Yeah, I agree. One. I'm sorry. I, I yeah. thought he, he gave a valiant effort. Last week we said there's no chance mm -hmm. that he could top Goose. Easily the best character of the first one. But he, he, does, he does good. But yeah, he's still no. Oh my not, God. It's not as dead. Not as dead. On, the, on behalf of Miles, I'll give a little argument for Miles. Hand and toned. Mm -hmm. Incredible mustache, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's a scene with him and Tom when he gets on him about his dad dying. And he's wearing this black fucking tight t-shirt like Tim is right now. And he is so filled out in that. You're like, oh, bro, you look terrific. He doesn't have the comedic chops like like Goose did, but he did fill in that team leader role very well when he was around the whole squad. But yeah, Goose is number one. I, I am right there with you guys. Like, I think that he is number two, but like, shout out to him because he really tried his damnedest. And I think that the little dance he does is one of my, my favorite single motions in cinematic history at this point. Uh, but I loved Goose in the first movie. I cannot believe that the entire plot of this one was dealing with Goose's death. I think that that is just fucking perfect. We're dealing with one of the greatest, if not the greatest, duology of all time. So shout out, shout out to the Goose Rooster for Ragu Goo Goo with Goose at number one and there Rooster number two. Now it's time to rank the Top Gun movies. I mean, is there an argument? Does anyone? I will make an argument. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I will Go make it. an argument. I because I have to, not because I want to, yeah. but because I feel that I should make an argument that Top Gun One should still be in the number one spot 
And the argument goes as follows. Obviously, I'm going to make an argument that it was the original. It set the tone. It was groundbreaking for when it came out. It was one of the original blockbuster movies that made Tom Gunn's career, or Tom, excuse me, uh, Tom Cruise's career. And it had the better soundtrack. I yes. hate to say it, but it had the better banger moments because of the soundtrack. And this movie, of course, had better cinematography and the flights, all that stuff is way better, of course. I'm just arguing. I'm, I'm fighting for my back here, guys. Just just give me give me a little bit of space here. Right? <laughs> I, think that, yeah. um, I think that the I like the aesthetic of the original better. And it's just I think the original has a charm and a specialness that I don't know will feel about this one years from now. This movie is uh, Top Gun Maverick is a, is the best roller coaster on the planet. And for that, absolutely. It is very much deserving of the second spot. I would even tie it for the first spot, but the original Top Gun is one of the most iconic, one of the most classic movies ever made. And I just can't see putting anything above that. I I'm, I'm, I totally see like where you're coming from, Nick. I was going to make the same argument that like, this movie, Top Gun Maverick, is too good <laughs> to be as iconic as the original one is. And that's nothing like to say that like those great moments from the first one are bad scenes. They're just so 80s and like it has the perfect music and the perfect actors in them that, you know, like there's going to be so many more scenes that are remembered and mentioned and referenced in the original than the sequel. But that's just because, like, it's a, it's an older movie, you know, and that's just how well, things and, were. Then. Yeah, it was it was for that time period too. There had never been things like this, and it wasn't right. like there was eighty Marvel movies coming out every year. So exactly, we're we're in a different league of of gameplay right now than we were back then. Um, but I will say that, like, back in the day, this was this was a moment. Top Gun was a moment in cinematic history. It was a thing that it became an instant classic when it came out. And I don't know that this movie is going to do that largely because it's built off of a lot of the nostalgia from the first one. Having said that, I'm not going to be shocked if you guys put this above it. And I'm not even going to argue past this point because uh, this is just <laughs> yeah, me. This is me. talking. This is, talking? Me. <laughs> this is me just it. arguing for that one person out there that's listening. That's like, how fucking dare you even think about putting Maverick? Above okay, that? abuelito, sit the yeah, fuck yeah, down. Right. I look forward like, to holy shit, man. This movie is going oh, to be in the pantheon of all time action movies. Mm -hmm. This is one of those that like you got a new TV, you got a new sound system. I'm gonna sit you the fuck down. Because first, I'm going to show you the uh, the uh, skydive scene for Fallout first. That's I'm going to show you that as well. And then scene. I'm going to show you every goddamn action sequence in these movies because those make it all worth it. I don't think that the first Top Gun had nearly enough charm or characterization to uh, to sort of, you know, because we talk about the action scene in those movies right. and they just didn't really do a whole lot for me. Right. But... If there was a lot character wise and uh, dialogue wise, like I feel like that movie would be absolutely top tier, but I feel like it was serviceable in those points, but not enough to kind of outweigh and say like, hey, our action isn't there, but we got a lot of cool character and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I don't think it was that strong in that sense. This movie has action scenes that this movie could just be the action, but aside from that, there still is a bit of heart. There is humor that I wasn't necessarily expecting. I kind of forgot that Tom Cruise has those chops uh, in some of these sequences where there's good writing moments. This movie is phenomenal. It's one of the best action movies I've ever seen of all time. Yeah. Five years from now, I'm going to still be dreaming about when Tom Cruise was the fastest man alive up in the fucking stratosphere, bro, with <laughs> that so cool. awesome Black Star jet. I'm going to think Black about Star. the moments where they're in the canyon practicing. I'm going to think about when it's rooster and maverick and they're going up against the fifth gen fighter pilot and that thing fucking twirly spins around them right like yes. there's some incredible <laughs> moments in this where five years ten years from now we're still gonna talk about that right like this where was miles really, turns really around fun. mike and he's like what the fuck was that yeah <laughs> Iconic, bro. And, it, and again it's it's, it's not just the great action scenes it's how they characterize everybody through these action scenes too like you don't just get a much better sense of what's going on in the air but you also get to know each character through what they do in the air, what they say in the air, how they fly, just their relationships yeah. with each other. But and I this one for me. Oh, go, Nick. Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to throw this out there. There was a counter argument. Take my breath, breath away. You know, I love that. Don't you bring that yeah. up to me, Nick? You know, I remember, love that. Remember when the, we end with the, with the banger song where everyone's getting their original shots, where it's like this person was at Maverick Goose, all these people, Anthony Edwards, and it's that you've lost that love and feeling, man. It's just those, oh, those moments are tough. so good. Yeah. And that's, they were yeah. missing in this, sadly.
It's, Again, it's, yeah, that's it, the only thing is yeah, the music. And I know Mike uh, shouted out Lady Gaga a couple of times. I felt the complete opposite. I was like, oh, get out of here oh, with I this contemporary like yeah. Christian oh. <laughs> song oh. that Lady Gaga is singing. Uh, not at all what I wanted. She's incredibly talented, though, and, you know, it fits. But it's still, it's just not the same, man. And it, it's just, I'm not going to listen to any of the original songs uh, in this. I will say, like, Hans Zimmer and, like, the score and all Dude. that stuff is great. It was it's incredible. Perfect. I mean, that, Under, that's my thing. Is like, though, the, the score, I thought. They oh, I could not disagree more. I think it, the way that they utilized it made every single moment special. Like, I, I feel like they, they were writing themes to scenes as opposed to just having it be like a score that's always playing. Like the, the use of the sound design of Tom, like when, when you hear the mm. stick, the amount you hear the stick in the breathing, I think makes the moments that have score so much better. I think that the first movie is iconic and it is one of the most iconic movies of all time. So many scenes that are just... The, the the only thing going for them is how iconic they are. This movie takes those iconic scenes and makes them great, makes a great film, makes great characters, and I think it ups the ante on everything the first one did. Uh, I think the only thing that this movie doesn't do necessarily as great is use a couple of the songs, but I think that it more than makes up for it in every yeah. other way. <laughs> and what, what Nick's saying about Top Gun 1 being a moment in theaters, I think this, in, in the 80s, I think this is going to be a moment in theaters. Like, in a world where we're getting 80 Marvel movies a year, this is going to stand above the rest. This, breath of this fresh air. the mm -hmm. fact that it's coming out this Memorial Day, this movie's going to fucking crush, and it's it is going to be a, it's, 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 fresh it, yeah, there you go. Watch. This is going to be a, a word of mouth movie where Every single person is going to be like, everyone's saying this movie is that fucking good. There's no way. And then they're going to see it, and that's going to continue. People are going to be blown away by this fucking thing because it does what it should not have been ever capable of doing. It is more than just being a Top Gun movie. Like This is one of the greatest action movies of all time, and I think it's coming out at the perfect time to, to like remind people what films can be. Even dumb films. This is a dumb film, but it can be so much more than just being a dumb film. Top Gun Maverick's my favorite movie of all Let's time. Let's vote for it. We got to vote. Put it on the ranking. Vote for it. Who thinks the Top Gun Maverick is better than Top Gun? Raise your hand. You are just... Of course. Everyone but monsters. Nick Scarpino. <laughs> I just feel so blessed that, like, when we started this, Nick took me on a journey and was like, this is a very special movie, Mike. You're going to love it, right? And it was special to him and it's special to me. Now with Top Gun Maverick, I have that, right? When I have kids or, like, whenever I go down 10 years from now... I can show somebody this and be like, this was the baddest at the time. I saw this and I loved this. And, you know, not many movies get to do that. We look at Space Jam and Space Jam 2, right? Like, I don't get to show number two to people now. But Top Gun Maverick, I get Never to show to people and be like, this is something special to me. You know, I love that. Super cool. <sighs> God. Well, I could talk another two hours about this movie or I can go watch it again. I love you all. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Top Gun Maverick. Matt Batson, thank you so much for joining us for your first in review series. Uh, where can people find you? It's been an incredible journey, Tim. Thank you so much for having me. You can follow me on Twitter at S Batson, uh, YouTube.com slash Matt Batson and Twitch.tv slash Gino VII. There you go. Uh, like I said, next week, we're returning to Jurassic World with Fallen Kingdom, and then the following week will be Jurassic World Dominion. But until then, I love you all. Goodbye.